This is Derek's O'Reilly Auto Parts story. After the third time jump-starting my car, I finally realized my battery was dying. So I stopped by O'Reilly to have it checked. They tested it right there in the parking lot. It was bad, real bad. But they helped me find the right battery for my car and even installed it for free. Now my car starts like new. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. This is Jordan Grace, and you're listening to the Social Suplex Podcast Network. BWB, this is One Nation Radio. You better get it right. Rich Ladder, James Boyd came to give him life. The Blackest Wrestling Podcast has come to kick all ass and drop it six feet if they're kicking trash. Word, let me welcome y'all to something different. And if you dig it, man, you should let some friends listen. We be getting it in this on the regular, dude. Ravish and flow, but this shit rule. See, James don't rap, so I had to break it down. The whole network, man, we coming for the crown. Raps in the columns, I keep them both covered Making the beats too, so the listeners can bump it Hit us with the rating, yeah, I'm saying it's a five Before you hit it, talk, bob your head side to side It's One Nation Radio, and this is the beginning It's Rich, and I'm here with James It's time to listen to One Nation You got to unleash the power of the pyramid this is Mike Sempervivi from WrestlingObserver.com. Check me out on Wrestling Observer Live every day. And also check out your boys, Rich and James, on One Nation Radio. Uh, this is Kenny Omega. We're listening to One Nation Radio. Check it out, guys. These guys know what's up. Big Kenny Omega fans. That's all it counts to me. Goodbye and good night. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to One Nation Radio. I'm James Boyd. With me, I'm Rich Lotto. What's going on, man? Not much, man. Just, um, you know, ready for a, another great show here on, uh, One Nation Radio and to show unity. Uh, we brought a white man on during Black History Month. <laughs> oh, uh, so. Oh my God. <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, I am half, I, I'm half Hispanic, but okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the 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 voice may sound familiar for those of you guys that listen to Keeping It Strong Style, uh, making his long-awaited One Nation Radio return. The young boy, Josh Smith. Josh, what's going on, man? Yes, uh, for those listeners that have been with us for years and years, welcome to Two Nation Radio. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a minute since I've been on here, man. I forgot about I forgot about when Josh tried to run me off my own show. I forgot about that. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's been hey, a long time. This very show, Josh once you know said that uh, Okada and Omega was going to be six stars before it happened. Yeah, I did. Well, Josh says a lot. Incredible. Of shit, so I don't know if we, I don't know if you want to credit him as being a, you know a, the the, the uh, visionary the visionary that they like that, or if you're saying like, yeah, he got one right. What we do on my show is if we say something right, we take victory laps. And then if we say something wrong, we never address it again. Yeah, Correct. I mean, that's, that's how most people kind of have that Proper way to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. Nah, um, lots of stuff to talk about. Yes, I guess we have to start <laughs> at the very top where one of the best wrestlers in the world is on the shelf for about six months. Roma Takahashi tore a peck and will be gone for half of a year. Right, that's a, a six, a six, nine months. It's, like they, it's they're been, saying they're saying at least six. At I least mean, six. who knows how long? But you know how like New Japan is. I mean, he might get healthy in six months, and then they need to wait for the perfect time to bring right. him back, the right tournament, the right match. It might be a little bit longer than that, even. Yeah, so uh, that sucks. I mean, what what you know? As the uh, co-host of Keeping the Strong Style, what are your thoughts on it, uh, Josh? Uh, I mean. I don't think I have anything uh, revolutionary to say. It's probably the same sentiment everybody has. It, it really sucks. Uh, I feel bad it happened. Uh, it's unfortunate. Um, and, you know, I hope he gets better. Uh, the the I guess the one um, silver lining is it probably opens up a little bit of a vacuum because of how, how much of a star Hiromu is in that division. Probably necessitates them shifting a couple things around and uh, moving some people into – you know, spots that maybe they weren't going to get, you know, otherwise, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, you know, first thing that comes to mind is Desperado. Um, given yeah. how he was at the end of the year and, um, you know, Ishimori, you know, has talked about Horomu, you know, especially main eventing all those uh, best Super Junior World Tag League uh, shows. Um, 
you can see that like, there are people that obviously have the talent to be at that level, but obviously they're just not that that level of star power. You could, you know, you could see you know power vac- vacuum to step into. They can, um, you know, get themselves in a nice little spot while the top guys going for that division. Um, I guess um, outside of the obvious. Like what do you, what do you think Hormuz's year was going to look like? You know, we've all you know over the last couple of years or so have talked about the possibility of him, you know, potentially doing the never stuff or whatever else and transitioning, and talking about his you know his his ability as a um, at the top of the card. Um, if they were to change some things, like do you think that's just like solely out the window because they can't depend on him anymore? Or do you think that's like just well that's another year delayed of that? Uh, it's really tough to say. I mean, first and foremost, I, I'm kind of in the camp where I don't think he ever goes heavyweight. Mm. I, I don't think he has the frame or the aesthetic look for it. And I think that they'd rather kind of market him as as big as the heavyweights, but, you know, they're junior star, a la mm. the same thing they did with Liger, a la the same thing they did with Tiger Mask. Uh, and that's not a bad spot to be in. Um, as far as his year goes, I really don't know. I mean, I, I thought he was going to drop the belt to ELP this coming tour anyways and then that was probably going to necessitate some sort of chasing scenario or you know at least keep him busy until you know presumably super juniors is probably around the corner in may that is if they're sticking to their regular schedule right uh or if they can even get the junior talent to you know to hold one of those i guess but um i don't really know what his year looked like and that's kind of the thing i don't really know what New Japan in 2020, what their year really looks like. Everything's kind of really tour by tour, case by case, uh, because they're still in a state of emergency and they still aren't playing with the full deck. Rich, yeah, man, I just hope I, I just hope John Cena can be contacted. Um, one time, you know, he I believe he beat a torn pick in about three months. So whatever oh uh, John Cena was taking, <laughs> we can go ahead and get him on the phone with Hiromu Takahashi. There may be some type of language barrier there, but I know Cena speaks <laughs> Mandarin. So, like, it, I, I I believe he could be bothered to learn a couple words of Japanese to be able to communicate with Hiromu and let him know what he needs to do to, you know, be right back on top in, in you know, short fashion. But, um. I, you know, the first thing I thought of was like, yo, let's, you know, these, these, let's get these imports in here to, to start buffering the star power. You know, uh, I feel like if, you know, like all those guys they got on strong right now, like they're going to have to put them on the boat or plane and, and get them to Japan eventually. And, you know, I think if you're Tony Khan, it's a great opportunity for you to, you know, do another olive branch in New Japan, be like, hey, you know, we're willing to do you a solid, like, you know, Rome was gone. Like, how about, you know, you know, we, we let you hold Sammy G, you know, we let you hold Ray Phoenix for best of super juniors or something like that. Just, you know, get, get you guys uh, going. Like, I think that would be an awesome thing to do. But, you know, that's just kind of wishful thinking. I, I think we're both still awestruck that you, compared mandarin to japanese as if it's like yeah. translatable yeah i'm like that's nothing that's nothing in the fucking life no what, no what, no, what? no no so 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 my mentality <laughs> is if cena could be bothered to learn mandarin he could also learn japanese because okay. like you know okay See, thought, it sounded like I, it was correlated i thought you were no, saying no, like no. he's already learned he, he's one of them mandarin oriental languages so therefore it shit easily ports over and i was like wait no. what that is not how no. that works what the I don't, I don't think that's life. how it works. No. Man. no. Okay. All right. This, 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 is for, this is for clarification. Because if I don't ask yeah. these questions, someone is listening to ask these questions. And they go, I ask these questions about you. So, like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So. Well, on, on the latest uh, Road 2 show, they set up, because they were setting up a, uh, a junior title match between LIJ and uh, Bull Club. And what I thought they were going to do is put the, ta- the junior tag titles on. Hiromu and Bushi, and then swap the junior title over to ELP, most likely. Uh, with him being injured, they had to go in a different route. So they announced uh, on the latest tour that it's going to be um, Suzuki Goon, Kanemaru, and Desperado challenging for the junior title. So that kind of speaks to the point James had that they're probably going to do Desperado and ELP. <laughs> and I'm guessing Desperado is going to, you know, take the pinfall and. You know, ELP will be. You know, he's going to get hit him with that loaded boot, uh, and Man, be, be the new tree. Yeah, he's been kicking the trees in the tundra of the Great White North. 
Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I, I just hope Hiromu heals uh, fast. You know, I know, I know he was uh, he was drawing some you know mixed reviews on his, his like very long main events, but like, nah, man, like he, like he, uh, and I, I'd like to put it out there: Hiromu Takahashi is not injury prone. The last time he was injured was like a freak accident on some movie they've done a million times, and this is just, I think, plain old bad luck. I would wait before tagging him with that label. The last time he got injured was t- almost three years ago. Yeah. yeah. If you get uh, injured once every three years, yeah. you are not injury prone. Uh, there's another say. injury. Yeah, I was gonna uh, there's another injury in New Japan. Yeah, uh, Tetsu Naito looks like I, I saw a video where uh, it looks like Yuji Nagata like rolled into his knee, and it looked like some old Tom Brady behind the um, offensive line. Somebody fell into the knee. Marcus Pollard. and yeah. rolled rolled <laughs> up on. That's 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 what it that's what it looked like. Yo, it, that was uh, that was really cringe, and it's it's kind of interesting because a lot of New Japan fans are. I don't, I, you know, I don't think they all watch every Road Two show like me and Jeremy stupidly do. So I don't, and this video hasn't been circulated as much as you think it should be. Uh, it's kind of weird. It's almost like there's like a cover up. But uh, <laughs> seriously, I well, think I'll it's tell like, you about a cover up. I think it's like the Naito <laughs> fans are like hoping and praying that he's okay, so they don't want to circulate the video because when you watch the video, it's very clear <laughs> they don't want to spread propaganda. <laughs> yeah, it's very clear this man is out for probably nine months. Like that. It looks like a classic ACL tear. Like right. his whole his whole entire fucking knee comes out of the joint. So I think he's not going to be challenging for this IC belt anytime soon. Like his knees bent, waist plant. Like his weight is planted at least half of his into into both into uh, his right knee, and then just caves in. It's like, oh, okay. Like watching us, fo- I'm watching a football to know like what a torn ACL injury. Like I've seen enough of those be like. Yeah, uh, he may have torn his ACL. Like that's, that was my first thought. Um, so yeah. Normally, I'm very hard on the Lij fans on this show and, and the Naito fans, but I'm going to leave you guys with some uplifting kind of words here. <laughs> here um, Is it the oh same shit God. I was talking about on the on the on the thread? Pretty much. Yeah, okay. we, we, were we, we, were, we were saying the same thing. We were saying the same thing. So, like y'all know, I mean, it ain't no secret. His knees is 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 not in great shape. Right. Yeah. You know. Uh, the last couple of years, he's slowed down and then he'll be able to, you know, in a big match, he'll be able to come through pretty much as good as he can, like at the dome or, um, you know, various other big matches. But, you know, your, your, your average match, like, you know, he slowed a bit. However, the, this injury is not the death knell you may think it is. Um, you know, I, I imagine that he's got tons of wear and tear and them actually going in there to fix the ACL may be able to get some of the blood flowing throughout the rest of the knee and then clean, well, you know, whatever. It, it, it ain't really about getting the blood flowing. It's more about getting some of that debris from like <clears throat> meniscus uh, stuff and, and, and yeah. cartilage stuff, you know, you, you get some of that rust and dust out of them knees. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. like, and, and once that's like, you know, cleaned up, he may be able to come back from this injury. Uh, with rest, him actually getting off the road and having time to, to recover and then, you know, train, he may, uh, show up in better condition before the injury or after the injury than before the injury. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. They haven't made anything official yet. So I think they're holding out hope, but it looked bad to me. Um, you know, so hopefully. What, what day did this happen, Josh? You know, I, d- I don't. I- I actually don't know. I, I'm going to catch up on everything tomorrow before okay. I record, keeping a strong okay. style. Okay. All right, because I was like wondering, yeah. like, is I, th- is I think it was the seventeenth. The seventeenth? I mean, or either that or the sixteenth. One of those two shows. Okay. They did. So they did four road two shows back to back. It was absurd. Wow. Jeez. Um. All right. Well, I mean, I, I imagine we'll find out soon, like the next, you know, within the next week or something like that. They, I mean, jeez, but yeah. Um. I think we got everything on the New Japan front so far, right? Is there anything else we're missing right now? I mean, nothing worth talking about. I mean, they got the Damn. big Castle Attack coming up. No, they got Castle Attack coming up, but I, we, this is a busy show. I think we should talk about the other pressing stuff. Okay. Yeah. So I guess, we, I guess we move on to last night's WWE pay-per-view, Elimination Chamber, 
a show that based off the gimmick, I thought, okay, they're fine. They were entertaining matches. Um, as far as some of the stuff, you know, I, the wrestling, you know, WWE main roster, pay-per-view, like, sometimes wrestling is really good. A lot of times the wrestling is just flat good and dependable in that particular uh standpoint but then like the booking or the the idea for directions where you want to go kind of makes you kind of like wait what um you know really enjoyed the the uh the opener i thought it was the best match in the card but um well, what were your thoughts on it josh uh you know <laughs> because of the stipula- so, it's just cuz the stipulation was that the winner was getting an immediate uh or you know was going to face roman reigns later right. in the evening uh, obviously, Re- Reigns not drop the title, so that kind of took a lot of the uh, excitement or even investment out of it for me. But with that being said, I was pretty confident based on the way that they were talking, what they've been doing on TV, all the promos and the hype, that they were going to do a story where it was going to be Cesaro, maybe with a bad wheel, winning the entire chamber, and that would be like maybe his, you know, attaboy for re-signing. Uh, that's mm-hmm. what it seemed like to me. And I remember them having that really great SmackDown match, or maybe it was Raw from like, a, I don't know, 2016, and it was like a near four-star match. It was really great. And I was like, okay, you know, at least if we get that, it might be okay. But then they went the other way, and they gave us Brian um, winning, which normally, you know, <laughs> I, I would, I'd be happy about that. But it was very clear that as soon as Brian won, <laughs> that he was just going to get fed to uh, – you know, to Roman, and we've been waiting all these years trying to get a rematch between these two on the big stage with the big program, and they've never given it to us. And then this was kind of what they, this is what they think of that feud. You know, this is how they they view these two guys. It, it really sucks. <laughs> Rich, what were your thoughts about uh, in general last night before we go in depth? Yeah, um, some of it was fine. Some of it was nonsensical. Some of it was like. That was that major baby face looked dumb. Um, just just a weird show overall. Uh, I like the opening chamber match, uh, like Josh did, but at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is. WWE in the main roster don't invest in this, things just happen. Um, <laughs> and you know, at the end of the day, I was right as I normally am. You know, when it comes to with, with, with Daniel Bryan and, you know, everything else, uh, Sir Sam sat on this show months ago. We told you what it would be from the moment that uh, Daniel Bryan got put in this match uh, when they won that tag match. I was like, oh, great. Daniel Bryan's going to win and they're going to feed him to Roman Reigns in five minutes. And it was less than that. It was about 90 seconds. And I was like, wow. As Josh said, that's what they think of this. Um if you're going to book Brian and Reigns, book it for real. Do the promos we want. Do the rivalry. Let these dudes, like, really, you know, express that shit that's there because they've demonstrated once again that they are scared shitless of doing it. Going back to 2019, when rather than book them on SummerSlam, they just left them both off the card. And this ended up with Roman Reigns versus Eric Rowan as the feud. Um, <laughs> so, uh, seeing, seeing, you know, the them ha- finally be in the perfect alignments, which you never think would happen. It was obvious that what was going to happen. I was not shocked at all. I knew Dan Brown was going to win. I didn't believe the Cesaro stuff for for a second, and it was like, yep, they personally uh, did this to troll me. Okay, so with that being said, I guess we'll go through the match. Um, the first elimination chamber match, as we talked about, gets a title shot. Later on the show against Roman Reigns, turns out they got it immediately after. Um, Daniel Bryan, Cesaro, um, I'm trying to think. Of, oh, uh, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, King Corbin, and Jay Uso. Jay Uso, that's right. Um, the youth movement compared to the main event. Oh yes. Oh <laughs> yes. Um, also, all six are uh, you know sterling examples of how great the uh, NXT developmental system is. uh so you start start off with cesaro and daniel bryan very good wrestling at uh, at the beginning and then all of a sudden in in comes corbin um corbin is there to bring down the match for some reason 
<laughs> so, um, he, he's basically clearing house, house with the two guys that have been going at it for about five minutes. Uh, then at some point, I think it was, uh, Sami Zayn was next. Sami Zayn was next. He, cl- he, cl- you know, closes off his door from getting open, even though this idiot forgets it. Both sides open. Cesaro goes in there, pulls him out, whoops his ass. Uh, they do a spot where they're, um, they're on top of the pod. Uh, Cesaro chases him basically like when they start dangling over the uh, the pod or dangling on the the uh, the chains of the pod knocks him off um, he ends up falling down and Corbin catches Cesaro and I forgot what the spot was but ultimately um, I believe Kevin Owens comes in next Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn Sami Zayn talks to, to Kevin Owens and say look man it's us it's, it's me and you it's kiss. <laughs> It's it's generico, it's Steen, it's Sami Zayn, it's Kevin Owens. We can do this. We can clear these guys out. Kevin Owens, for like the 59th time, has screwed over Sami Zayn. He throws him head first to a pod. Uh, and as he throws him to the pod, he's like, wait, what? No! And, you know, kills him. Uh, by that point in time, Cesaro does the... Uh, the, the Cesaro swing on Corbin and slaps on the sharpshooter, gets Corbin the fuck out of there. Random knees. Great booking. <laughs> that, that may be the best piece of booking that WWE has done in like the last, like, how many years? It's, it's get like, Corbin look, the fuck yeah, out of here like, quick. Look, there will be no need for Corbin heat because we got to get this, we got to get more heat for Roman. That, that's exactly what that was. It's like, oh no, you get the fuck out of here. We finally have a main event heel. You can kick rocks, so. oh. So, um, uh, so then from there, uh, Kevin or Jay Uso gets in. There's a spot where um, someone gets eliminated, and Kevin Owens' hand, arm in, is by the door as they're, as they're I think, sending out Sami Zayn, actually. Uh, Jay closes the door on Kevin Owens' arm. He super kicks him like a million times, and it gets him in the ring. His Uso splash and pins him. Um, and then, you, then you end up with final three of Cesaro, Jay Uso, and, and uh, Daniel Bryan. Uh, doesn't the final two go down to Cesaro and uh, Bryan? Daniel Bryan. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, that's right. So um, that final two is it was very good. And you just remember, like, oh yeah, you forget that, like, when you don't watch WWE that often, you kind of forget like, these people that you remember as being awesome. You forget that, like, they're still awesome. They just don't. Do it as much as they used to in WWE, and then you like you see that with Cesaro and Brian in the end, and you're just like, oh yeah, that's right. Like Daniel Bryan reminds me almost every single time I see him on on, on pay per view that he's still awesome. But like Cesaro, somebody has kind of been always starting to stop on TV, off TV, used on not used. It's like, oh yeah, he's still awesome. He's still awesome. So uh, they had a great finish. Um, and then, as you said, the cage lifts up and comes Roman Reigns. Um, they go for the immediate, you know, the ref check thing, which I hate now. Like, I, I hate WWE matches with, like, the ref not sure if they should stop the match or not, while also, like, keeping the guy that has the advantage away and is like, hey, man, either declare him the winner or let him k- finish him. I'm t- Don't, this halfway shit is not realistic or whatever. But anyway, um, Daniel says he can compete. Roman sets up for the spear. Daniel Bryan uh, has a great counter. He turns it into a, uh, a yes lock. Roman powers out um, from from like a half guard or whatever else. He's on top, ground and pound. Um, the ref teases if he should stop the match or not. Uh, Roman's like, it, it, or am I, it, have I won yet or have I murdered him? Which one is it? Um, he ends up slapping on a guillotine and choking him out. Um, it's like 90 seconds. I... I really enjoyed the match. I really enjoyed the, the Hell in a Cell match in general. I really enjoyed, um, uh, but you know, um, going to the Roman Reigns thing, it, it is disappointing. Um, the idea that we're not going to get uh, a big Daniel Bryan Roman Reigns match at some point, but um, for what it was, the execution of it was I thought that I thought the whole spot was cool, but obviously, it's not what I wanted out of um, Daniel Bryan Roman Reigns. There, there was a point. I, I think it's flat out lunacy, honestly. There was a point in the <laughs> match not to, not to book that feud. Go ahead, when, go ahead, when when they initially started doing the uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn stuff, uh, my girlfriend's like, "Yeah, they're they're they might partner, or they're, one of them's going to turn." And I was like, "What? Again? They're doing this again?" And she's like, "She's like, 
they're so good when they're together. I was like, I know, I liked it. 12 years ago. It was great. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> like, why can't we do something different with these guys? But, um, you know, maybe it's just for the match. I don't know. But uh, one thing is, you know, on cage match and in the record books, you're going to see these as two separate matches, right? But every now and again, there are things that happen post-match that just either elevate or, you know, deplete a match. You know, you think about, like, when Terry Funk and uh, Ric Flair wrestled at Great American Bash and the post-match brawl that they had, and it, like, literally elevates the match. It's like, it, it makes it better. Or, like, the Tupelo, you know, concession stand brawl, like, shit like that. This mm. little, this title match at the end is part of the match, even though it technically isn't, it's all one segment. It's one thing. And for me, as good as it's the match Roman was... It's a Roman cash-in. It was a yeah, cash-in. It's, it's a Roman cash-in. It's, it's just, yeah, we had two cash-ins last night, literally. I thought the same thing. <laughs> So I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, the the match was great, but they they did all the good stuff that they did. <laughs> they tried to um, artificially reheat up Daniel Bryan to no, just like like mm-hmm. like bro, like they, they got him talking about the yes movement and like the commentators talking about the yes. I'm like, what yes movement? Like, <laughs> like what? Like, huh? Like, what, like, like, what are what, you? Like, I feel like I'm in a different like world right now. When he said yes is especially, dead, that was a work or that was a shoot. Well, especially when it's like the yes movement and they pipe it, they're piping in like the yeses because like there are no fans allowed in the trop. So it's like, yeah, it is kind of, you know, um, so I'm, I'm with you um, to that extent, Rich. But I, I mean, I didn't I didn't think of it as they were trying to heat him up for some big moment just to, you know, uh, even before the you know Roman came out there and murdered him, I thought like, okay, he won the he won Elimination Chamber. Let's see what they do. And ultimately, it was like to get more heat for actually in in reality, Edge. After that match, he cele- uh, Roman celebrates, holds up the title. Edge comes from out of nowhere and attacks Roman and declares that he actually wants the the big dog, the Tribal Chief, the head of the table at WrestleMania 37 in uh, Roman James Stadium. Um, match I don't know man like I think those two could have a very good match but I don't know like you know Roman is kind of I been feel in like there's going to be like, lots of talking right yeah, Roman's, <laughs> Roman's been in this and that's going to be hard in an outdoor stadium but like Roman's been in this mode where like he does not aside from like the McIntyre match like he's been doing these things and aren't your stereotypical wrestling main event wrestling matches so um like I feel like if he goes out there and has one of those with, with Edge and um you know, I think, you know, they'll have a very good match. Um, I'm not I don't really know what they can do with each other to get themselves to that personal um extent like um him and Jay or him and Owens got to to do the monologue stuff, whatever else. Not saying that I want that, but like like those two have no kind of real connection other than their their fucking finishes to make it to make it to where some personal thing and like I don't think either one of them will do something as lame as well you have a finish and I have a finish and I don't like it like that sounds I don't I think that's beneath both of them I think it's beneath our intelligence I believe believe that's above below both of their intelligences and I believe that's I think that's also below both our as fans intelligence like really that's your real sell is move a move match. Okay, so um, hopefully they'll get a we'll get a regular. I, I don't find match. this. I, I don't find this compelling in the least bit. I don't um, either. Dale Bryan sitting right there, um, promptly moved out the way, sacrificed. That's that's all this was. Like, and then uh, another thing, right? They had Edge be Captain Savaho, and it's like, <laughs> bro, like no man. An- like it's, it's another just- thing <laughs> is with um, all the potential opponents for Roman, like. I would like to see a that people have you know thought of since he's came back at SummerSlam and or or since he won the belt back is like their universal title is like all right well him and Jay because of you know how he's a fucking slave he's a slave uh, right him hey, hey, you you might not want to say that <laughs> you, you, I can say that I don't think you can say that anyway uh, so <laughs> you. With, with, uh, with, you know, Big E, obviously, with, like, the powerhouse of the New Day and the powerhouse of the Shield. Uh, they've had that one match of, uh, Survivor 2016. You know, it can kind of set off, um, Big E into the stratosphere, into a higher stratosphere now that he's singles and they split up the New Day. Um, you know, there were, there were places to go with that. You know, even, like, 
I don't, I never thought a chance was going to happen because it's Cesaro and like we've been there, done there with him for like uh, about six years now. But it's like even with the push to get Cesaro on TV, right? Even this is a push on, on TV. Like I would love to see a um, WrestleMania match with Cesaro and Roman before I want to see one with Edge. Like no offense to Edge, but like Edge ain't no fucking Cesaro in the ring. So at this stage, especially at this stage, so um, you know, you know, we're going to get I some think, really I think good Edge promo is work. just here because. So he's oh, here, sorry, so you won't cut. get fined. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I'm saying I think Edge is here simply to keep the belt on Roman Reigns longer, so they don't beat anyone. They they can quote unquote say, yeah, he beat this part timer uh, legend at WrestleMania, and he quote unquote didn't damage anybody who they actually want to drop him, have him drop the belt to. So rather than do something, and then I, don't, I think Edge is just kind of a placeholder, honestly. But I mean, even if the but the thing is, even if it was going to be Daniel Bryan, that would have been the same thing. He was going to lose to Daniel Bryan. Um, but I, I think the thing for me was, um, to that extent, is like, all right, if obviously your line of thinking is different from what you know, you look at them and think what their line of thinking is, and like, if their line of thinking is all right, who, who are we eventually gonna get this belt off to? Like after Roman, like the answer is nobody, bitch. Like he's the new Brock. Like this match where he gets <laughs> where someone goes to elimination chamber and then a babyface wins and then he goes out there and stomps him out in ninety seconds. Like that's some Brock Lesnar shit. That's like him. Be, that's like when he took the belt off Kofi in six seconds or squash Ricochet. It's like he. Well, I've been saying this to like almost from Jump Street. Like he is the new Brock. And people like, I don't know, because obviously, you know, there's a lot of uh, things that come along with saying the Brock thing, especially like the part-timer stuff, whatever else. But like, no, like if Brock showed up every fucking week and only wrestled like twice a month or whatever else, like it will look, the template look like that. Obviously, they're going about it a little differently as far as like how they handle promos. Like Roman's a way better promo than Brock ever was. But yeah, my point is like, He's not doing that much. He's getting heat. He's, he's and he's overpowered or whatever else. And while he's overpowered, he still also finds ways to cheat and do all this other shit. And no, you no one ever get any heat on him. Like he's and he has Heyman with him. Like that's he's yeah. That's, that's what this is about. Like it, it's it's every Roman Reigns push that it's ever been. Like every babyface push that he's ever had was where the entire thing was set up to get him over. It's just been inverted. He's a heel right. now. Like I mean, so, I, but I the think thing I is, got, at least they're better at pushing heels. So whatever. I think I got a little bit of a different take. I mean, I think with Edge coming back uh, after all these years, and with the amount of money that they're paying him to keep him away from AEW, you kind of got to do this at some point. You got to give him a title match. I'm not saying with Roman, but it need to be with somebody. And so you you kind of have to make up your mind, you know, which which one of your champions do you want to, you know, get that win <laughs> over over Edge, you know. Um I know that Edge is not commercially as big of a star as many of their other like former part-timers that they brought right. back. Yeah. But I mean, after coming back from from the next surgery after all those years, like you kind of got you got to kind of capitalize on it for business reasons eventually. Mm-hmm. And with how insulated they are, it doesn't really matter anyways, no one way or the other. So I mean, I I just the only thing is, is like any other company could do this story better, and it would it actually would be compelling. But because it's WWE, it's just not compelling. Like there is a built-in story. <laughs> this the story is he was the guy on SmackDown for all those years. He carried the brand, and he never dropped the title. And now he's coming back to get what's rightfully his. And you know, and there's there is something there, but they're not going to tell that story. It is going to be some spear versus spear shit. Yeah, I mean, well, brother, also- it's going to be it's going to be some heavy laid on thick. We're gonna tell I, you I how good it, this know. is, but more than show you. Uh, and, and there's gonna be people trying to write think pieces about how awesome it is, but yeah. it's just not. That's like the, yeah. that's the key point that you just said, Rich. Like they're going to tell you how awesome this is, way more than they're actually going to show you. Yeah, that, that that's the key part there. Um, well, well, guess, the thing, well, guess what? They're gonna have thirty thousand people there, so we're gonna actually hear it this time. The thing for me is like I look at it with Edge, is like. Given what we talked about with the people that we, they could have chose between Daniel Bryan or, or Jay or um or or Big E, like him versus like Roman in uh, in a main event headline position at WrestleMania versus like 
a actual contemporary and actual peer is so much more intriguing to me when he he's wrestling all these fucking guys that like from from you know, the, the fucking ghost of Christmas past and shit. It's like, hey man, like, mm-hmm. does he ever want to wrestle somebody in like that's a contemporary? Like, we never got a fucking Seth Rollins and Roman match yet. Still to this day, like it's wild. And nah, like, we Money in the Bank 2016. I mean WrestleMania is what I mean, Rich. Um, oh okay, but, yeah, my bad. But uh, yeah, I just I just mean like. He's he's always gonna wrestle old yeah, he's, guys. He's banned. He's he's banned from wrestling people like in his era. But he's a heel now. Before it was like the optics of role. He's our top baby face. Was like the whole entire if you know sixty million. Everything's people, in 60, reverse people, now. If sixty thousand people are cheering for the other guy, that's gonna make our the guy we really want to push like shit. Well, like he's a heel now. Who gives a shit? Put him in there with Daniel Bryan. Put him in there with Cesaro. Dang or you know Big E. Blah blah blah. blah. And maybe you can get some other guy over eventually, and then you you can have three stars at a Two on um, male side, male single side. I would have had, what, I would have had Edge fight McIntyre personally. That, exactly. That's I'd like that more than than this because it's like that's more intriguing. And also, it's like you look at what like McIntyre is about to wrestle. It's like I mean, I liked his match with Lashley um, at, at the big, um, after WrestleMania last year. I forgot what pay per view that was. Um, it, they had that the, the the weird finish. I liked that match a lot, but it's at the end of the day. Lashley's never going to do the talking for himself. It's going to be MVP. And it's like, all right, well, then you look at it, it's like, all right, what else What else could possibly McIntyre do? Sheamus? No, thank you. So it's like, put Edge there. They you can, they can have the promos. They can have the match, whatever else. That's another chip, you know, that's another thing that can help uh, McIntyre elevate or whatever else. While Roman is already, while Roman can do, you know, finally wrestle. He can wrestle Daniel Bryan. Do some, <laughs> yeah, do some intrigue. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the more interesting, interesting thing, Lawyers. But, like, okay, so Mac, Edge has been wrestling on Raw forever. The things you want to see him do are against, like, Orton again or um, whatever else. It's like, okay, so, like, the three, the three most important people on the show, Edge, Roman, Drew, it looks like they're wrestling like, like the the least, like the least ex- in, or like lower on the list, like level people you want to actually see them going. It's on the biggest show of the year, and it's kind of like that's that kind of. I bummer. mean, I could tell you what the most interesting thing that any of those three people that you mentioned could possibly be doing, but none of them are man enough to do. Fight Walter. Fight Walter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, declare they're going. They're taking a ship to go to go to the UK right. for the title. <laughs> no one wants that smoke. Wow. Oh, uh, um, there's a gift that has come across my timeline. I, I just Randy Orton is coughing up black goo like Papa Shango oh has God. has uh, inflicted a, a curse on him. Yeah, he vomited. This black, is uh, unbelievable. Black it's got to be the fiend. You Unbelievable! Gotta, yeah. You got to see it. This to man's in Papa it. Shango it's territory. Incredible! <laughs> it's okay. incredible. All right. So the next match after that was a, was the U.S. title match between Bobby Lashley, Bobby Lashley. Check your Twitter DMs. Uh, Matt Riddle and uh, John Morrison. Um, pretty good match start out. You have Lashley throwing those guys around, and then eventually they were able to isolate him on the outside, and then Riddle. And Morrison go to work, and it's damn good. It's you know, it's Riddle, it's Morrison, it's they they, they tear it up for a while. I feel like that. I feel like they've fought in PWG or something before. I wouldn't know. I I, I haven't tried anything Morrison has ever done. Like <laughs> I don't like good ass wrestler. I don't care. Uh, well, I don't say I don't care, but like I've never been like, what's he doing? Or whatever. I've never been worried about his, his whereabouts. But um, yeah. Uh, a vision. There's some weird. I, I guess I don't know uh, if if MVP is shoot hurt or not. But either way, he brought a crutch down to the ring. Um, Lashley gets back in and starts clearing house a little bit again. He has Morrison in the uh, hurt lock. Uh, Riddle grabs MVP's uh, crutch and he's bashing that shit across <laughs> across, uh, across Lashley's back a few times. He gets out the ring. Riddle hits the bro Derek and ends up becoming the U.S. champion. Um. Obviously, this was a protection call. Uh, Josh actually was a what about half hour before the match started was um was speculating on like why did they still make this triple threat match? Why did was why did they have to have a pre show match for a winner? Clearly, they were getting this belt off of um Lashley to go after 
some, another target turned out to be McIntyre. I think you actually accurately called out McIntyre, right, Josh? Uh, yeah, pr- yeah, I called out pretty much all that shit. I mean, I try my best not to watch WWE if if at all possible, but every now every now and again, um, my my girlfriend to kind of appease her, we'll watch the weekly show, and I've seen what's been going on with Matt Riddle and uh. Bobby Lashley and like I was like there's no way they're having this dude beat the like in no right, world he as a geek yeah he's been a geek the whole time like there's no way he's beating Bobby Lashley so when they brought in a you know a third guy after Keith Lee you know who knows why he wasn't even there we does don't anybody really know. know what's going on with Keith Lee or why he missed the show I don't know it sounds like COVID oh. but who knows yeah oh like he's in COVID Joe okay I mean we don't know no one knows but oh, that's just okay. what, yeah, and that's no just what it sounds like okay. but uh yeah, once they did that, I was like, okay. So, I mean, Morrison's eating the pinfall, and, you know, they're going to move him on to, you know, Bobby Lashley to the title scene. Like, that's what they're doing. It's just predictable. <laughs> Very. And, 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 and I think, Josh, like, if you look at it, all these months they protected Bobby Lashley, it makes sense. Yes, yeah. triple threats fucking suck. Like, oh, yeah, I just, like, lose the match, but I don't get pinned, but I drop the belt. But, like, fuck that. I mean, they could have just I'm had in. him win. Yeah, they could have just had him win and then do title like, versus title. Him, hey, I'm the U. Correct. What the fuck were we doing with the U.S. belt anyway? I, I'm, I'm, I'm just past. I, I, I think that, I think that evil has just beaten the double title shit out of me. Like between, <laughs> between, between evil and Naito and Keith Lee just handing over the fucking uh, United or uh, North American title. I think I'm just. No, I never want to see anybody ultimate warriored up. I just never want to see it. Like, no, no, there's no, there's no need. No, for it. I mean, I mean, it doesn't have to be a double title match. It could be, you know, if Lashley wins, he gets the, the belt, but the U.S. title ain't on the line. But you I know, you. they had to do this goofy thing. Matt Riddle get, gets a belt. I mean, I, I've made it clear. Like, I, I could care less about what happens with Riddle. Um, but yeah, it, it's a good booking design. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have a problem with it. I, I'd have a problem with it all. As far as the as far as mechanics of all right, well, we want to do this thing that we did, you know, um, you know, like eleven months ago, or get to this thing that we did like ten or more like ten months ago, um, and get back to it with these two protected guys at the top of the card, and like I, I, I. I I, I I thought it was cool. I, I thought it was, I thought as far as the mechanics of it was cool. Um, I would like it more of someone that I liked more than Lashley, but but well, what is what it is. Um, my 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 whole thinking is this: if they knew that they're going to do a title program with him, and they knew they need to get the title off of him, why couldn't they just have like one of Riddle's fluke wins from earlier on Raw, just be the title win? And then he could move on and get reheated up before WrestleMania, like any other regular wrestling company would have done. They don't want him losing the ring. Yeah, but he already did. He already but lost it was a, him. But it was a flukish thing, right? That's what I'm saying. It should just been a, he should have lost a fluke win and lost the title, and then just moved on. I think the thing is, if you do it that way, then you're going to have to do one of those Baron Corbin deals, where he's like, "Oh, you, oh, you pinned me via via banana peel. All right, I'm gonna beat you down, and it gets neither person over. Like at least with this, is like Riddle beat somebody. He didn't get his ass whooped, and then like the person, and then Lash, you can be like, can be furious, and then like take it out on Drew. Um, I mean, you know, I, I, you know, I, I think that's a, I like that more than other than typical. Oh, I got beat, beat you down, in, and then like in, imagine in a vacuum, that's nothing. true. But if you watched the show for all these weeks and seen how, how bad, how bad they made him look, there's no Fair way enough. he's getting over from this. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Look, that man won the match and immediately took off running. Yep. Like, yeah, that doesn't tell you yeah. like you know, you know what it's like. He's a baby it was like, uh, cheat it, it was like when your boy um he didn't win this match, but remember when uh after one two three kid beat Razor Ramon and then they had the match with a bag ran. of money and that man ran off uh with the with the bag of money. It was one of them. He was like, oh, moose, oh, <laughs> bag of money, get the fuck out of dodge. Bro, it's not like it's a heel running. This is like this is a good guy, like running from what may come. Like, nah, hey. man. Um, yeah. So, what's uh, the next match after that? Women's uh, tag titles. That's Nia right. Jax yes. and Shayna Baszler against this, Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks. This and the one, This yes. <laughs> um, I gotta tell you, but 
we gonna get to it in more in depth, but like I hate Reginald. I hate what he stands for. I hate what he represents. <laughs> I, I I hate I, I hate his existence. I hate his being. Um, but anyway, we'll get to it. Me- as far as so Bianca Ring- Miller and Sasha Banks. As far as <laughs> ring gear goes between Shayna and Bianca and and Sasha, I thought that like banner that evening. was awesome. That was for th- those three brought it with the ring gear when they were in the ring together. When the match was which was Shayna was in the ring uh, with either Bianca or given uh, the chemistry and the history or with, or with Sasha. I, I thought that it was a good match. When Nia was in there, it was comical at times. Um, I she, she, I think she's gotten worse. She's not hurting people anymore, so she's better in that aspect. But like, it's all. But like, she's barely more mobile than Aja Kong right now. Is she no, more? I, is she more mobile than Aja Kong? I can see. I see Aja Kong now. I just watched her in the um the Aja Kong come second on round. Top rope. Not even that, right? When she does elbow drops or leg drops, she actually like elevates to end before dis, uh, descending back with as gravity intended. N- Nia just falls. She's falling, yeah. She just falls. Um, she needs to go back to back bump uh, classes. Like I mean, I know she had the the double ACL surgery. Well, I think it was two years ago, whatever else, or la- or the, uh, you know two years ago, whatever else, into last year. But it's like she has no lift. Um, and I don't know, I don't know what to say without saying something that's going to make me sound like an asshole. So I'm not going to say it and I'm going to leave it alone. But, um, if, if she's going to have to figure out to re, 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 rework the way that she works, like she's going to have to start, start watching like old Kong tape or whatever else to watch, like have matches where people run into her. If this is where she is now, because like her trying to wrestle how she's wrestling now Ain't doing number doing more wear and tear on her the way she is right now, um, so I, I I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't. So that's all. That's all I'm gonna say on it. But like, yeah, she's she is um, she she she's not good. She's not good right now at all. So the Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks lose this match via this black man that's working for this white woman in Black History Month. Yes, I hate Reginald. I hate Reginald. <laughs> this man, this- <laughs> Every single day, I go onto Twitter and I see black women talk about our stinking asses um, and how we are the weak link uh, in the diaspora, Rich. And then I see this motherfucker Reginald proving them right. <laughs> I see him on every fucking pay per view show. Get him the fuck out of here. I hate him. <laughs> he makes me hate myself. <laughs> what? He makes me hate myself. <laughs> like, how can you do this to these queens? What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Snap the fuck out of it. <laughs> What is this, wrong with this man me? was si- this man was simply trying to you know serve them you know a beverage you know <laughs> and this trashy finish made Sasha 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 look Banks like looked a, like a box, rocks box dumb rocks box dumb like plate of piss like complete and he was just I, trying yeah, to help I, guys yeah and, and this Sasha Banks being this I mean. I, I mentioned this hey, in the thread. Hey, as as most toxic brothers do, they just trying to help. <laughs> I hate Reginald so much. Get him the oh fuck out of here. So, like, this brings up the point that James made. Like, why even book this match? And then it ties into a point that, you know, I was making that, you know, with the women's tag team titles, they're used for a very specific reason. And I feel like you have at least three, maybe four uh, examples of this. Um, going back, and this is where they tie up the singles champion. The singles champion suddenly wants to win the tag team titles and be a double champion. It's happened with Asuka at least three times. It's happened with uh, Becky and Charlotte against the Kabuki Warriors at TLC yep. 2019. Actually, 19. Yeah, so yeah. Yep. Y- yeah. They use these these belts to basically buy a month for the champion, so the champion like gets a free month essentially, and they don't have to do like a program or anything. And what it leads to is like I I, I would have think the better thing would have been Sasha screwing Bianca on some Flair Sting shit, right? Halloween Havoc ninety five. I, I I think that would have been the best way to go with this, it, you know, and be like I don't. 
you know, Bianca's doing all this shit where she's waiting to choose and all this stuff, and Sasha go ahead and make that choice for her. You know? I, I, I disagree. I think that they should have gone the classic WWE route, made them, made them the champions. champions that don't want to be champions together, just like Austin and HBK, just like Cena and whoever else he did it with. I don't know. Under, <laughs> un- Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels, Batista. yeah. Yeah, but T- Undertaker and HBK did it once. They did it like a million times. Like, let- let's do it for the women too. I don't see why we can't get that shit rolling. They always do it. They used to do it right before WrestleMania and they before SummerSlam with, too. I mean, they did it. With, they did it with Sasha and, and um ba- Bailey last year. Yeah, but they were like best friends. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. You gotta you gotta have you gotta have you know Enemy, enemies the, enemies yes. Okay, fair enough. You're right. Supposed enemies. <laughs> Yeah, um, who, I don't who, know. By the, by the way, who who had the better gear? Because I got into a debate with my girlfriend, and I liked Sasha's gear better, but she liked Bianca's better. Sasha, I like Sasha's. Um, I would say Sasha, just because of the color scheme, as far as the design pattern, I would go with Bianca. Mm. Cause like the, as far as the design pattern is, it was more one of those, like, that's a template deal with Sasha, where like I've seen her with that same exact template before, just a different color scheme. But like, don't sleep on Shayna's. I think Shayna's yes. was like one of her best ones, and and yeah. we may have um yeah we may have historically undervalued her in the gear conversation. Well, I, I mean, I don't know about. I wouldn't take it that far. Okay, so I, I've always thought she's had raw. She's shit. she's had some gear that has been raw, and then other times just been like it's good but not like amazing. Like her, for example, like when she uh, when they did the NXT invasion in uh, the Summer Slam or Survivor Series, I was in. 19 or whatever else when she had like the champions black and gold gear and when she also broke out for royal rumble the next uh, few months later like that mm-hmm. gear is hard um this gear was hard she has a couple other ones that are also like that she's broke out for takeovers that i thought, thought was really good i thought this is like her second best gear she's ever had um mm-hmm. like the black and gold one is my favorite one for of hers but yeah you you are right we do sleep on her as far as her gear i don't know if she's as good as like you know like Sasha or Bianca, but like she's she is up there. Yeah. Anyway, this match stunk. Uh, these tag belts are, are are whack. Asuka got um, left off the card. She was supposed to be put on the card. Uh, she was trending after the show. She's going to be de- defending her title against Lacey Evans at one point, which also brought confusion to me because like the week before, like Lacey Evans had announced that she was kayfabe pregnant which then also brought up that she was also legitimately pregnant in real life so it was like is she good enough to still continue wrestling if so what's the point of her doing this if they're going to put the belt on her and then like knowing them try to transition her off TV immediately so knowing them so it was like I, I, so I was confused it's like this match still going on wait what and then it just was scrapped at the, I guess the 11th hour so you know there leaves me leaves you more questions on what's going on exactly she's just living the gimmick <laughs> but at least uh, at least they didn't put the belt on Charlotte you know yet right I'm, yeah. I, yeah yeah but at least they didn't do it now because that would be their go to move yeah uh, I, I, I think they want to get Charlotte a, a, a title win. Oh, we're going to talk about Asuka. Like, it, all it did was bring Asuka uh, into focus again, and then you start pulling out her cage match. And this has been one of the most futile, inept, terrible title reigns that I can think of. I believe the only people she's wrestled are like Zelina Vega and Lana on pay-per-view. She wrestled and Sasha. She, on pay-per-view in this title reign? Yeah. Uh, well, it wasn't a title match. It was uh, the Survivor Series or SummerSlam champion versus champion match. That's right. Okay. So that was a long time ago, and she hasn't had a pay per view match right. since September. Right. Mm. And that was what? what Zelina, right? <laughs> yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that came into focus last night. So. Yeah, Oscar. I mean, they they, they at- never treat her well. It's always a smoke. Right. Smoke, smoke and mirrors, uh, type thing with Oscar. Yeah. She's the mountain to climb. She's the, she is the, she's always the fallback person. Like she is basically like a better version of of uh, how they treat Natalia. Whereas like we we know you're de- right. We know you're dependable. We know you can do this. We know you always be a smiling face. Blah 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 blah. But we don't see you in this position, so we're at a certain level. So we'll push. So if shit hits the fan, 
we know you will be a fucking rock for us. Um, but will we ever like, you know, go all the way with you the way that we do like other people that we like more? No. Like, you know, um, last year when, um, you know, Charlotte gets injured, injured, uh, Becky gets pregnant and leaves. Like it was on her to try to carry us. And he looked at that division at the time and was like, Oh my God. <laughs> um, so it's like, you know, it's Liv Morgan, like the fresh after the fresh off the lesbian, uh, gimmick, Lana, um, Naomi wasn't what well, Naomi wasn't on TV at the time. I think she was on SmackDown, even if she wasn't on TV at the time. Um, you know, and then you had Kyrie there, and it's like they didn't do the Kyrie feud because Kyrie was leaving in a few months. So you you looked around and it was like that's what it was. And then they haven't fixed it. Charlotte just came back recently, but like you know, they they also you know November they switched up some of the rosters. Naomi came back. Um, Lacey Evans is there, but Lacey Evans isn't that good. Or it are good at all. Peyton Royce. Lo- Peyton a Royce. lot of people were yeah, wondering like, why Peyton Royce couldn't get the match instead last who night. Gives, like, and as much people like you look at, we talk about this a lot. It's like you look outside of like the horsewoman, Oscar, and like maybe in a few select people, and it's like like Naomi, like Natalia, and just like you wonder why someone like Ruby Riot doesn't get a shot, but it's but you know. You kind of have an idea. You wonder why someone like, you know, um, Sonya Deville, obviously, you know, the unfortunate thing that happened to her, why she's off TV right now. Like, they had something with with Mandy Rose. They never really tried it, even though, like, she, she seems right up Vince's fucking alley. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's you know, and then, like, they mismanaged, like, Liv. Liv, Liv seems to actually, like, have some talent for this. And then, like, they've they've thrown her against the wall in a million different directions. It was like, I mean, it's almost like, You've done, you've done damage, and it's like these. It, it's weird. Like you look at NXT, and it's always, it's always, it's kind of always been like this. At least like since, um, at least since the man class started coming in. Like you look at the main, you look at the NXT rosters for the women. He was like, look at that level of depth, and then you look at the main rosters once they get split in half, and he's like, oh well, there's three dependable people, um, three really good people on that brand, three really good people on that brand, but then after that, it gets real. You know, like when we talk about like mm. 2018 SmackDown, when it was like it was Becky and Charlotte and Oscar and Naomi, and then after that, it was like a whole bunch of like Carmella and Alexa Bliss type stuff, or whatever else. So, and that's kind of always this kind of still holds up, even though it's like, damn, like y'all got Shayna, y'all brought up Shayna, y'all took her off fucking TV for months, or whatever else. Um, it, it's it's a really weird thing, and it's like, and but meanwhile, you just see like. Damn, like NXT got people that like are good or better than the people that they have on the main roster that like are job people like Casey and um and Caden. And then you see like Zia Lee's doing this fucking supernatural thing. You got um you got uh Zoe Stark coming in and she's a fu- she looks like a fucking killer too. And it's like, all right, like do you want to like put up EO or you know? Dakota or Candice or you know, and obviously Ember just came back, but it's Tony Storm's like y'all have these people, and it's like even when you have someone like a Mia Yim or a Mercedes Martinez, y'all immediately go to say no, 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 put masks on their faces, like Jesus Christ. Look, the, the issue is they they don't want to fire anybody. Yep they they never trim the fat. In yep. the women's divisions, and um, Vince's aesthetic uh, tastes are still like very obvious. Yeah, there's absolutely no reason why Mercedes Martinez or Mia Yim like didn't hit the ground running and in, into something with, especially on uh, as the bottom that depleted as Raw division is. Like they desperately needed people, and what did they do with them? They did. They had Jack fucking, shit. They had May. They had me out there fucking tweaking, fake tweaking. Yeah, let's get to this main event, man. A WWE yeah. title elimination chamber. Drew McIntyre defeats AJ Styles, Jeff Hardy, Kofi Kingston. Randy Orton and Sheamus. Okay, can we talk? All the people got into the ring. Randy Orton came out either last second to last, and because <laughs> he's been such, he's been such an evil motherfucker for twenty years. Or I guess it's like year eighteen, year at nineteen now. Um, he has beef with every single person. To play. <laughs> Jeff Hardy, two thousand late two thousand eighteen. Uh, Kofi, two thousand nineteen. 
let's see who else is in there. Drew McIntyre, all the last year. Uh, who else is in that pod? AJ, AJ Styles, Styles, Sheamus. Sh- different years. Yes, like Hell in a Cell matches with Sheamus. WrestleMania matches with, with AJ Styles, right? Um, and you just see it, he's like, he had heat everybody. So he goes up to every single pod and stares. He's like, look at the history. Look at, look at the characters and <laughs> stuff. Right? And then like, he does all that stuff. And then Kofi, cause he's such a fucking goofball. He says, yeah, Randy, look, Quaz looking thick. <laughs> <laughs> and Randy, Randy's face looked like, I want to laugh so hard, but I can't because it'll ruin my aura. But he had this smirk. <laughs> he went from a stone face to a smirk. And then he walked away and then Kofi kept yelling at this man. <laughs> Yo, he's like, <laughs> it was so fucking funny, bro. I never caught that. That's funny. Oh my God. He, it, it, you have, it was so fucking funny. I, I, I have to find it and send it to you, the clip of it, but it, it had me howling. But, yeah, um, I, I, you have to go through the review for it. Like, only thing I really remember is, like, the, the almost stuff in the, oh yeah, Seamus and, was it Seamus and Orton that started the match, right? Not Seamus, uh, it was Orton and McIntyre, right? No, McIntyre was, came out. Came out third. Third. Who, who started with Orton? It might have been Jeff. Know. That's right, it was Jeff. Yeah, and, um, start off, you know, Orton starts out slow. Um, and then all of a sudden McIntyre comes in and, and then from there, like what, once everybody got in, it got good in my opinion. Um, and I did, I did like, or you had the weird stuff where like, I think Jeff gets eliminated. Um, everybody's laid out or there's like, a, you know, multiple people down and after some spot or everybody gets their shit in and then like almost, almost gets to the uh, pod that AJ's at, rips off the plexiglass. AJ then like runs into the int- through, runs out, and then in through the uh, main entrance, and then like tries to cover people. I'm just like, "You're a fucking idiot! What are you? What? Like, why are you yeah. trying to get in the chamber match like that fast? Early, like, yeah. you don't know what order the thing is. I, actually, I think so, I think somebody won the sixth one, so he could have been fourth or fifth. Whatever doesn't matter, but. This is one of those attrition. This is an attrition match. Why are you trying to get in as soon as possible? You may pin those guys, but ultimately you still have either one or two people that come in that are coming in fresher than you eventually in this match. Who gives a shit if you pin those people off? Let the, close the damn thing. Let them all kill each other. Then they come out. You're a heel for fuck's sake. Yeah. I, 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 Here's another thing about it too. Is like okay, we're supposed to believe like. That there are there is some sort of ordered rules to this thing, right? So if a man illegally enters, how is he allowed to then compete? Does he not get disqualified? Like, but do that, his pinfalls even count that's at that also point? The thing. Right. Obviously, elimination chamber is no DQ. Obviously. Right. So why does Adam Pierce come out and throw out your boy? Meek Mill after he rips the fucking thing down. It's no DQ. <laughs> if he had came in and started helping and been the seventh man, it wouldn't have fucking matter. Check right. this out. Why did they throw out Sami Zayn's documentary people, but they didn't throw out almost? They did after he started fucking with the stuff. But you mean immediately? I get you mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, Sammy pointed it out. Yeah. That was yeah. an astute point. He's right. Um. Yeah, I... I will say this. Lar- I will say this. It's a whole lot easier to throw out them geek camera crew dudes and throw out uh, your boy Meat Meal. It's a lot harder. <laughs> it's a lot harder. It takes a lot yeah, more manpower. Man. Yeah, I, I thought this was um, kind of boring for long stretches. Um, Orton, it's also for me leg. Yeah, um, Orton, I, I liked. Uh, go ahead. I liked when. Uh, Seamus finally came in. Like for, well, yes, it was like probably yes, it's yes. probably like the first time Seamus has been interesting to me in like five years. <laughs> I like the bar. I like the bar. I liked I liked the bar, but I I didn't find it to be compelling. I get you. Fair enough. I'm only shocked that Dan O'Brien won't be wrestling Seamus <laughs> at oh WrestleMania. It ain't, bitch, it ain't too late. You better shut the hell up. <laughs> Like, I, I think they're on different brands, so that's so? you know what that means. Unless, What's a brand? Unless they do, unless they do like a sudden draft or a trade, which they could fully do. Hey. I think they could both end up in the uh, Andre the Giant very easily. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and th- God, and technically Andre. that'd be them wrestling each other at WrestleMania once again. Are they really yep. gonna do the Andre? I don't know. I'm just. I don't who know. Knows? It, who knows? Yeah. Like, they didn't do the Andre last wrestling. year, did they? Nah, because they were, they were shook by COVID. Now the, 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 the they don't care. Now, <laughs> half a million people. Now they dead don't in, care. Half a million people dead in this country. Do not, it's cool now. <laughs> Look, it's, it's suddenly all, it's, it's, it, suddenly it's all better this year. You know? Oh my God! What? That is that's. Wow, well, this all leads into Drew McIntyre winning. Uh, he puts away well, AJ at the well, end. One, 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 one thing. Like, J- Jason. Wow, Josh pointed out. Like when Sheamus and Drew got in there, like they start, they start. Oh, blows. they were they were, they were throwing. They start throwing blows. That and Those that was stiff strikes. Fun. That was fun. Um, then when we talk about, I mentioned the Formula A thing. Like Kofi ran wild out. Um, Orton, Orton. Orton got pinned was well, the first pinfall by Kofi, and then he hits Art Hills and everybody, and then leaves. That set up the AJ doing the stupid thing when he runs in. But like, Jeff yeah, Hardy. like Jeff Hardy ran wild, eliminated. Uh, and then you know you find the final three are, are McIntyre and Sheamus and um, AJ, and I thought they did a decent job of protecting the potential Drew versus Sheamus thing by having AJ eliminate Sheamus after like Sheamus seemingly had Drew. Dead to rice, where all he had to do was his set up for a finisher and kick him and would have pinned him. So I was shocked uh, by that. Um, I mean, it protects the match for if they do WrestleMania or do something after WrestleMania or whatever else with Sheamus in McIntyre because obviously they're not done with that. That's something they want to do. They've been working on that. For not not shocked because of the booking, just like the way they shot it and then oh, okay. the way it just came out of nowhere. I was like, oh shit, they really did that. That's, yeah. that's dope. And also, we got to point this out. He's after AJ hits that, he sets back up to hit Drew with the final forearm, and he and McIntyre catch him with a fucking anti-air claim. That was that awesome. That was awesome. That it shit was awesome. was awesome. So, so yeah, uh, like, you know, once everybody got in the ring, it, it, it did begin, uh, it did become fun. Uh, and then well, we'll talk about the. Then I was gonna time. say then the fun, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what y'all what, came here I for? I don't know if the fun ceased, but but because I kept having fun as this happened. Um, yeah, I was so, I was dying, laughing, stitches, tears, just like, <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so Bobby well, Lashley brings his well, ass out. B- before this, though, you gotta remember earlier in the night. Before this match started, they showed a little clip in the back, and Miz was like behind some like canisters or something, chilling with MVP, and they're like, you know, in cahoots talking, and like it's like, what do those two have to talk about, you know? So like it's very obvious what was going to happen here. Yeah, you know, beating you over the head, you know, rather than just letting it happen. Um, McIntyre is out there; he gets destroyed by Bobby Lashley. Lashley fucks him up. They yell on commentary. Bobby Lashley is upset about us- losing the U.S. title or whatever, <laughs> and I'm like, uh, especially because uh, like after he had lost the U.S. title, I think MVP pointed out is like we got we're on the bigger and better things. We're on, we have a plan. Something along the lines of there's something else that's bigger. This you know they some ominous thing to say that like we're not done tonight or we're not done with just the title. We're on to something else. So it's like I don't know why why there was a miscommunication between what the the showrunner slash booker Vince McMahon and what commentary is doing. I don't know. It's just brain fart. I don't know. But it, it did not help at all. Miz runs out. Miz cashes in on Drew McIntyre. And in 2021... No, no, no. The- no, 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 no. After you talk about them backstage talking, Miz walks up to cash in. He's still shook of Lash, like Lash is in a rage, is in such a rage that he's going to double cross him and whoop his ass so he can't cash in. Lash, he leaves. He then gets in there and then he uh, hits the, the DDT kick out. Then he hits the Skull Crunch finale. It wins. And in 2021, the Miz. Is the WWE champion? Mizanin, man, be fucking believable. <laughs> oh, he look. deserves it. You know, look, sure, the, who cares? <laughs> the Miz. <laughs> I, I was happy on a personal level for the Miz because I think he should have won the title five years ago. But um, I think he's clearly regressed since then. This isn't his peak. This is a this is a gold watch. This is. Honestly, fuckery. Um, <laughs> if you look around the rest of the wrestling world, like, this yo, this is like, 
And I don't mean stat padding for Miz. I mean stat padding for McIntyre. Like he's gonna be a three time champion in like eleven months. Yeah, we'll we'll get there in a second. When then like Miz, like he uh he was fourth uh on the list of uh, time between reigns behind The Rock. Brock Lesnar and Bob, Bob Backlund. Backlund. Um, and he's like, you know, it's been nine years since he's, you know, won. So, like, they, they kept referencing the angry Miz girl. Like, the angry Miz girl is a grown woman now. Like, yeah. I, you know, the world moves on, but WWE doesn't. Right. <laughs> like, the main thing the, that, and the main thing about the angry Miz girl is, like, people forget is, like, it wasn't that she was a angry, angry that Miz won. She was mad that Randy Orton got cashed in on. She was wearing a Randy Orton t-shirt. No one remembers that part, though. Continue. Um, I think they could have taken this opportunity had they been a better prepared company. Had they been a company that is proficient at booking pro wrestling, maybe you get one of those young guys that needs like you know maybe a young star to certify them like even if you're just going to take the the belt right off them you establish them as they're a former wwe champion uh mustafa ali has a whole fucking stable behind him he could have been given the money in the he bank also, he got pinned on the pre-show this. he got pinned on the pre-show i mean right i, I, I see like what they've, you're saying. they've got tons of guys everywhere i i disagree i, I see what you're saying but at this point they needed to not take the title off this guy. They're trying to make him like their, that too. Their dominant, dominant champion. Why the fuck would you take well, the title off of him? Well, he beat he beat five guys and then got and then got beat up by like the the second best dude in the in the promotion or in the brand and then got sure. cashed in on by a, by a third guy. It's like all right, dude, like we talk about the Gargano needing his shotgun to beat that guy. I feel like, like there okay, was a straight like, line. There was, there, he got his ass whooped in in a way that was like it is it, it is beyond the pale that he did <sighs> manage to have foiled Miz in that situation. He he went through no. a hell on, he went through a K or a chamber match gets beat up by the number two dude in, in the brand, and then the third guy comes out of text. So I was like, "Damn, come on!" No, I get that. That Very doesn't make title. Him, that in and of itself doesn't make him look like a geek or anything like that. I'm okay. not saying that. I'm okay. just saying like, why take the title off him? Like, it's it. The Miz isn't even the Miz isn't even the guy hey, that he's gonna You're that right. he's gonna be wrestling at WrestleMania. This is just a stopgap, right. and Miz already got his cash in. Months ago, and that should have been the end of this story. And then they booked themselves right. in the corner by by wait what? Give it. He did the cash in already, and then they gave yeah, him the he did the cash back. in. Wait, you don't he lost this? the cash in, and they said never mind, we'll do it again. So here's what happened: Morrison came out with the briefcase, handed it to the ref. They did the cash in. He got. Broke kick or Claymore kicked and, and lost. they said that it's Den's account because Morris is the one to cash it in and not yes. Miz. But they did the match, so had he won, he would have been the WF champion. What would they have done? Two weeks later, been like, right. oh well, Morrison cashed in, so you got to give the belt back. Well, that made it, no well okay, 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 hold on, hold on. In theory, you don't do that. You don't do the dusty finish like that for a cash in with a heel. You do that with a with an underdog babyface. Like if like if Daniel Bryan in two thousand eleven were to cash in after, like, you know, the, the big show and Mark Henry matches, and then, like, there was some idiot that was with um, Daniel Bryan that they handed the briefcase over, and then he won, and then, like, the next day, like, they were like, well, it wasn't you that cashed in, so, like, in the next pay-per-view, it'll be true with that match. You, Daniel Bryan, and you, Big Show, and you, Mark Henry. That's what they would have done, but I get what you mean. I get what you mean. I, I told all bad. There was I a told- straight line to WrestleMania, and they decided to drive ninety miles out the way to <laughs> to, or to hit a U turn to come right back to where the fuck they want to go. I well, told my girl. I told my girlfriend uh, later that night. I was like, "Yeah, they just announced for uh, Fastlane. It's gonna be Drew McIntyre and Bad Bunny in a tag match against." Uh, the Miz and Bobby Lashley, and whoever gets the pinfall wins the title. Mm. And she goes, "Are you serious?" And I said, "No." And she goes, "You know that sounds like something that could actually, for real, for real happen." It, it I was like, "Really could." I, I know. Well, no, the best part is like it really the could. W, the WWE champion got got the shit smacked out of my bad bunny like two hours before he became the champion. That's funny as fuck to me. Not not to say that like that's awful, but it's like. Like Bad Bunny slapped fire through that man, and then that man <laughs> two hours later becomes champion. That shit was funny. Um, look, yeah. let, me, 
Like, the Miz has won three matches in the last calendar year. Are you serious? Um, yes. Um, wow. And it's like completely geekified. Is it shaking shake shit heels? So, you know, whatever. I get yeah. you. He needs to win more than that. He's going to be fucking champion. But it's like, look, man. It's, it's like it, it, if the if the justification is oh he's gonna lose the belt immediately then don't fucking do like, it like I, I I'm just I like, <laughs> like, like I, 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 no I, problem with the Miz I enjoy right. the Miz as performer I find him hilarious yes. uh if you're looking for people to say to be upset that the Miz is the champion wrong podcast right but <laughs> right I don't care like but Drew McIntyre I enjoyed his title his here the run he's had with the title over la- over those two title reigns and like yeah like this is I, I, I feel like something's doing, happening like, I, with we Drew. all we all agree that he's getting the, it's coming right back to him right look I, I think they're they may be searching for this big moment that there's no guarantee for it to be there because I seem to remember in 2015 when they kept yanking the belt away from uh, Roman Reigns and by the time he was able to beat Triple H for it at WrestleMania, it was a big moment that never came. Uh, I seem to remember Daniel Bryan having the WWE title yanked from him several times and then by the time he won it through the grace of God and him being a great wrestler, he pulls off two great matches that night and has a level of investment that no one else can dream of. Um uh, I, I will modern say, times. I will say this. I mean, we don't really know what's happening at WrestleMania. They still get that Sheamus thing kind right. of looming. Right. But provided it does end up being Bobby Lashley, which based on the protection he's gotten this year, it should be. They, Him and um, Drew McIntyre, I know you guys mentioned a good match he had in WWE, uh, you know, like a year or two ago that had a weird finish. But him and um, – they had a match at Slammiversary in uh, TNA that was like one of the best TNA matches – ever uh so i mean they've got they've got extensive history of you know doing good work with one another so there is a good chance that that match ends up being good and that's probably what why they did this is to give him the moment but it's like you know you know guy can make him be the like you don't have to give him the moment just let him go in with the title yep. and retain and set off a bunch of fucking fireworks like i don't get it yep. i mean i I think they're I think they're being too cute, but at the same time, I I, I it doesn't bother me that much because it's like ultimately we're gonna, they're going to have him versus Sheamus or him versus or him versus Lashley and they're in a big muscly man match. F- it F- might be all three. Could be, could be. Vince Vince may blow, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like yeah that. Stay, steer clear of the of so like, position at that, uh, so, at that point. So basically, they want to run back him versus Brock, but since they got ain't got Brock, they're gonna use Lashley and then add the whitest man alive uh, in Sheamus. And then, like, if you combine Bobby Lashley <laughs> and Sheamus, you get Brock, and that's who Drew McIntyre gets to beat. Sure, uh, I, guess, I don't know. So, <laughs> bas- so basically, last night. Um, like Miz was Andre the Giant and uh, freaking Drew McIntyre's Hogan, and that would pretty much make Bobby Lashley like what the Million Dollar Man because I think that's what this is. I thought you were going to say like a Hebner twin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would think wouldn't the, wouldn't the Miz be the Million Dollar Man? No, because he's gonna he's giving the he's gonna give the title back to Lashley. I I, I I'm not Gosh, yeah. okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Like I, I'm not, I'm not following you. I, I get what you're trying to get at. But he not, won the, I'm he like, won the belt through nefarious I'm, means, and now he's got to hand that shit away. I'm working on like 45 minutes of sleep in the last like 48 hours. I'm Holy, not, I'm not. What the going, fuck? <laughs> I'm not going to try to. I get what you're trying to say. I'm not going to think about it before my brain explodes. Okay, that's, that's what I'm getting at. So I get what you mean. I'm, don't make me think about it. <laughs> Listen, guys, this is why I don't analyze WWE anymore. Like, it's yeah, crazy. It's, it's, it's really, really difficult to do. It's... <laughs> um, like... so, anyway, so anyway, I guess we move over to AEW talk, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. The, the good stuff. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm trying to remember uh, what was on this show. This week, I'm pulling uh, up my notes. Now. Moxley in Phoenix now, I guess, unofficially becoming eligible for me for tag team of the year now that they've had two kick ass tag matches. 
<laughs> I don't, it makes no sense why they're ever together, but like I, they have good ass matches when they tag together. Um, and bro, what do they have in common? The they got about as much in common. Look, they they about got as much in common as like the nightmare family people have in common with each other. Good point. Very very good point. Um, he also had Rio versus Serena Deeb in the That's right. That was very good. Uh, Great match. Uh, good ass match. Um, high threes, maybe four. Um, let's see. Uh, there's a there. Were, uh, there was another match. Um, wasn't there? A, there was an FTR match, was there? Uh, yes, they face uh, the Seidel brothers. That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, That's yeah, right. yeah. They, yeah. They, okay. they face yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So yeah, yeah. Let's 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 start. Um, we opened up, and I believe. Uh, it was, uh, Hangman Page and Matt Hardy. Uh, they took on Jack Evans and, and Helico. This was short, um, seven minutes and, and they basically, uh, this is all designed for Hangman to kind of, you know, do his thing whenever he tagged in. Uh, Matt Hardy, I, I, there was a one spot where Jack Evans fell up, fell short on a Phoenix Flash, but besides that, you know, it was pretty, much the uh, match you're used to. Boy, did he fall short. I was like, what's going <laughs> on? You, take, you go ahead. Yeah. Um, and then Paige and Hardy ended up getting a win. And then uh, Hangman reveals, you know, that he did the switcheroo last week with <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with the papers. And uh, he referenced Brody Lee. And he said, uh, pretty much this is, you know, a, a one for the match. And I know you didn't read it. Matt Hardy was like, of course I didn't read it. I sent it straight in. Uh, <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I've, I've kind of like, I've wanted to throw him away. And like the good brothers, like I've guiltily enjoyed Matt Hardy over he the is, last, he is, like, he is a fun, dumbass heel. <laughs> Look, uh, so they booked a match uh, called a money match um, with him and Hangman, and this looks like Hangman's first step on the long road to, you know, coming back around, and he's got to deal with this carny, and um, if you remember back to that Battle Royal, Hardy was the one to eliminate Page, and it's kind of, you know, going from there. Uh, Hardy doubles the simulation, and uh, the step ends up being whoever wins is going to get the other's earnings for the first quarter of 2021, and it's called a money match. And uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars um, uh, mascot comes out, but it's actually Isaiah Cassidy. Uh, pulls the pulls the head off. He attacked him. Uh, he said he's putting a uh, – Matt said he's putting a $3,700 bounty on Page, and then Angelico and Evans joined in, and then the Dark Order came out to save him. I have a question. What did the thirty yeah. seven what did this thirty seven hundred mean exactly? Like was that a gag from like BTE from like robbing the young bucks some shit? I think it was now now that you mentioned it, like cause you know he's been charging him rent right, for right. the uh that, for the locker room. I thought room. it was, but like I didn't I wasn't sure. Yeah. Um yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But um he ended up paying that thirty seven hundred on BTE this week, which is pretty funny, but um yeah, then the Dark Order came in, and uh, Brody Jr., uh, you know, not worrying about school, like he, he's on national TV back. Zoom. Yeah. You know, flying in, making dates. Yes. You know. <laughs> um, and then, you know, that's pretty much where we're at. So, like, Paige and, and Hardy, where, what are we thinking about this? Well, before we do that, I want to point out one thing that didn't make sense here. So... If Matt Hardy didn't know about the switcheroo, how did he have the foresight to have the mascot as one of his, you know, goons? No, what ended up happening is he got screwed once he sent in the papers, realized he was, he was fucked, and then said, all right, I got something for you. Once I'm, I'm going to jump you after you set your terms. It, I, that's, that's, that's how I interpret it. It's like... He already turned the papers in. It was too late. He got screwed. So he, he put Isaiah Cassidy in the Jags uniform to whoop him after he got whatever he was going to get from the terms uh, set by uh, Hangman. So we're to assume that he was feigning surprise when yes. he learned. Okay. Yes. Because, I mean, that's not how I saw it. I, I took it at face value. Like he I, really, I did, too. 
I was like, I was like, something's like out of whack here. Like, I mean, look, well, I, I could be doing it. I could be do. Obviously, I am doing the work for them. They didn't explain it like that. Matt knew that he got fucked and that he was getting revenge that way. That is true. I'm making, I'm making, the, I'm making that logical conclusion for them because like most of it's tight. Jim Ross did ask if it was Urban Meyer uh, underneath the the thing. No, he's too busy <laughs> hiring uh, strength and conditioning coaches that shouldn't be hired. <laughs> so um, Alex Marvez was after that uh, with the inner circle. Uh, they tried to explain uh, the criticism of the angle last week. Uh, MJF says Sammy Guevara thought he was recording everything, but he was paranoid because the camera was recording everything. He said that Sammy needs to apologize him to him. Jericho then uh, told MJF to shut up, and Jericho said that MJF kept goading Guevara over and over, and uh, Guevara quit. And Jericho said a lot of this is MJF's fault, but the majority of this is Sammy's fault. And he said Guevara made a week of stupid decisions, which kind of hinted at his, um, uh, you know, time possibly an impact. Um, and you know, Sammy Guevara is now dead to him. <laughs> uh, shout out to Sammy Guevara for saying I'm not doing any jobs for someone named Ace Austin. Look, Sorry. <laughs> I bet, I bet uh, Guevara will be dead to Jericho after he gets his ass thrown out in a circle when he's out on the street. Yep. <laughs> yep. yep. Um, uh, what, what have you thought of this whole uh, inner circle storyline, uh, Josh? Because like, I've, I've like loved the the logical progression every week. It just keeps like rolling out a little bit more to peel another onion back. Yeah, I mean, I think it's great. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't know if I could do it just by giving it the most insightful, like, thought process. But, I mean, it's very clear, like, uh, Jericho knows what MJF is. And MJF, you know, has even though he, like, tries to hide it, it's very obvious. And the fact that, like, the, the inner circle are not, like, stupid, but they're still keeping them around for, you know, to utilize for their own purposes – um, I think that's good storytelling, but, uh, I don't really know. I mean, I'll, ultimately there's going to be some sort of conflict between him and Jericho and that's what this is all leading to. But, uh, the wild card in the middle of it all has always been Sammy and we all, you know, we, we've all kind of expected for Sammy to eventually at some point, uh, you know, break out on his own, whether that be a healer face, I don't know. But, uh, I, I think that this, uh, story's like, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I complained about WWE and I, I hate to make the comparisons, but like, I can't really predict this entirely. Like week to week, there's different twists, there's different turns. Uh, you know, and then every time I think that something doesn't kind of make sense, they logically wrap it up and tie it together and it, it all does end up making sense. Um, so I mean, I, I'm a big fan of it. I didn't like the, uh, the time they sang together, but other than that, everything else been really great. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, James, uh, I believe you just saw the Papa Shango uh, deal with Randy Orton. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I saw. He's hopping up black goo. Oh. So uh, up next, we got the return of Riho taking on Serena Deeb. And this was a hell of a match. Serena Deeb was incredible in this match. Uh, Riho. It was so great to see her back. I, I didn't know I would be this happy uh, to, to see Riho and, um, you know, the, one, one of the great draws in professional wrestling, uh, Riho uh, is back, you know, to, to claim her spot, uh, you know, here in AEW. Uh, what'd you guys think about this one? I, I love this. Um, uh, you know, it's one of those things where people have, you know, and I hate to bring up this, but you know, a lot of people have complained about the way they present the women, you know, the, you know, them not giving them opportunities and whether that's true or not, you know, it's not, it's neither here nor there, but very often they haven't had two women of the same caliber and, uh, you know, talent level as Riho and, uh, Serena Deeb that they've been able to match up very often. So, you know, with them going out there with stakes on the line in a big spot with a lot of time, you know, and they really went out there and shined and they, they picked the right time to do it because, you know, I don't really totally understand it, but people love Riho. And I'm not saying that like in a negative way. I'm just saying like, I, to me, it doesn't make sense why she's so, you know, translates so well to the audience. Whereas say like Hikarshia maybe doesn't to the same extent, mm -hmm. but because, uh, she's a, because she's a size of a little girl wrestling is basically the same thing seeing Rey Mysterio except for a woman. 
It's like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess that that's, makes sense. That's that's the whole factor. It's like she's so small and she's fighting and she's the biggest underdog and she has this you know, this big bright smile and she seems so nice. Like that's that's the, that's the main thing. Like she's yeah. just naturally likable. Yeah, and I, I wasn't saying it because it doesn't make sense. I'm, I was saying it more like just because gotcha. yeah. I don't totally even know why but obviously she's a huge draw so they picked the right time to showcase the women uh because they got the drawback and you know they went out there they went out there and they put on a hell of a performance and the match was awesome i loved it lots of moves lots of reversals near falls submissions and then uh rio ended up winning with the gato clutch uh james what'd you think about this um I like the second half a lot more than the first half. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the leg work from both of them. I like the fact that like Riho was like, "Oh, she has a leg injury. I'm, I am a baby face, but I'm also not a fucking, I'm also not a dumbass. So like, I'm in a jam. I'm desperate. Like, I I will use your leg injury that you you have in here, and I will give you a le- dra- le- dragon screw leg whip. Um, and re- Serena returned the favor by ke- hitting her with one of those Tanahashi in the ropes uh, dragon screw leg whips. Uh, I I really enjoyed the match. That's exactly um, what I thought of. <laughs> Tanahashi. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I see someone get uh, Dragon Street at this point, I'm like, oh, God, Tanahashi, and I'm worried about his knees. <laughs> 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 I, like, earlier today, when I'm um, um, during the, the, the second round of the women's tournament between um, um, Rio Mizunami and, and Aja Kong, like, Rio, or Rio gives um, Aja a, a Dragon Street leg. My first thing was like, who, who, in a match between Aja Kong and Tanahashi, who gets desperate and goes to the Dragon School leg, leg whip first? Who? I, I think Tanahashi goes to it first. We might as well do uh, the rest of those matches uh, here. So, like, and also talk about, um, I guess they're doing some type of Clash of the Champions type special. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On BleacherReport.com. Um, so not BR Live, like the other um, ones where it's just the U.S., BleachReport.com is how I gather it is worldwide. Uh, and they're taking this like it's a very serious thing. Like this is like meant to be seen as like, um, like it's a big deal that, uh, Re- Riho moves on. She's going to be facing Thunder Rosa. Of course, that's going to headline the show. They're going to have a, a trios match and they're also going to have the J- Japan final, uh, there on a Sunday. So they're pushing it like it's this, this big thing. And this caught like, when I first heard about this, I was like, huh? I don't understand this. And then, you know, for about two or three hours, I was, I was like saying, no, this is, this is bullshit. Just do it on, on YouTube. television or no, just, just do it on dynamite. I'm like, I want to see like real and th- like real and fucking Thunder Rosa should be on like, uh, dynamite or oh, whatever. I thought you meant but... Japanese match, my bad. Or uh, yeah. match in Japanese bracket, my bad. Right. But like, when I hear that, you know, they want to turn this into like this thing to where it's like, you know, a Sunday event, it's a special thing that makes me feel a little bit more positive about it. I question like if, you know, the, the thinking was they wanted to put a highly anticipated match. Why not put a bigger match there? If the goal, like Tony Khan kind of explained it in a way on Twitter where it felt like he knew he had to get it. He had to be the one he couldn't just tweet this anonymously from the AEW uh, account. It, it felt like he wanted to put his name on it, but I don't think he necessarily explained it very well because, like, when when I heard it, it was just like, oh, you're citing social media numbers. Like, don't you know those social media numbers are, like, fake? Right. I, um, when I first heard about I only heard about the one match. I was like, okay, so you're doing this for one match. And then at the, That's end, what of the I thought. After mm-hmm. end of the second round of, uh, the, sh- from that, of the tournament that I just saw on YouTube, it's Sheeta. It's uh, Re- versus Riho. It is um, you know Yuka versus em- uh, not Emmy. Uh, Yuka versus uh, Rio Mizunami, and then it's also the, jo- the Joshi Trios match all in one show. And I was like, okay, I, like that makes more sense. Opposed to one match. One first one, one match. I was like, what? Why? But now it's like, oh, they're doing a whole basically a one hour special. It's like, okay, that's fine. So yeah, um, it's gonna be a fun ass show. Yeah. I, I hope it's good. I hope it's what what you guys are saying, you know, and I know he went out there and made that explanation, but like I think right now I would probably guess this isn't gonna be that successful for a lot of the reasons that people were initially up you know, uh, upset about it. Because regardless of how accessible it is, 
most of the fan base is just conditioned to think that dynamite is the big show. We already see how they do with dark and it's nothing. And I don't think they're going to do anything with this. Like, I don't think very many people are going to watch it. Yeah. I don't think it's going to pop like 2 million viewers. I was more talking about the quality of the wrestling. That's, that's what I, that's that's my concern. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I would, I think that they've left such a bad taste in their, in, uh, people's mouths with how they've done everything with the women so far they we always talk about the insurance and yeah, when it yeah, when, no credibility. and when it comes time and when it comes time to like hey we want to do this special thing you know it it don't sound like it's a special thing it sounds no. like it's a separation right. it sounds like, like it's like, it sounds like, like they this, didn't right? think of it like this right if triple h was on the face of doing something involving a women's tournament on the network or on peacock or whatever else right It'd be awesome. It, people are going to immediately like believe in it in a way that like they haven't earned no credibility. And then we talk about this all the time in reverse a lot when like WWE's name is Mud. When it comes to women wrestling with an, involving the network worldwide stuff, with Triple H, the proof is in the pudding. He's been doing this for years now, and that's what it, that's kind of the thing that it takes, you know, over over time. And you know, there have there. This is the first. This is one of the. These are the beginning steps of this. You know, five years from now, given the path that they're on. If they pull up some shit on whatever else, on, on, um, BR Live, whatever else, if they keep going down the path they're going with the way this tournament has worked out, they're gonna have people, like, believe in it. And it's, it's gonna take time for, it's gonna take time to undo the one match or one segment per show, sometimes no, nothing on the show type of thing. Like, it's gonna take a commitment. And, like, we, we, we look at, we look back at, at it now like it was just a, a thing that just wasn't, uh, that was thing that was a given, but it's like you go back five years um, or six years with you know when they brought up the horse or the three of the horse women. It's like they, they still going, didn't. Figure they, out. Pain, they didn't figure this shit out until like two years ago, like fully or three years ago. And, he, fully, and even then, right? so like, like sometimes they're, they're just on TV eating innings. It's right. like, it's almost like right, what right. do you do with all that TV time? Right. So my so my thing is like you have to invest and watch stuff at times struggle in a way that you it, there's going to be growing pains and like that, that's going to suck being someone that has like as good as television he normally has outside of the women's division that's going to suck for Tony Khan but over time it will come back and pay him and and and, and, and you know and he'll reap rewards of this, the, the equity that he put into it it's just he's going to have to he's going to have to take a couple on the chin at, at first yeah I mean, if, it's, if it is indeed something he really wants to do that always what it comes down to. If it's ultimately something you want to do, you'll invest in it. If not, you won't, and then it'll become a self fulfilling prophecy. That's how it is. Well, well, it's clearly a market that they want to try to, you know, appeal to, obviously. Yep. Um, and I think also, from what I've seen of the tournament, I think it's been, you know, pretty good. It's been pretty compelling. It's just, um, you know, it, the like you guys said, the complaint has been one segment per show. And then this just screams of that, and that's the issue. That's true. You know, it, it just sounds like there's not enough time on TV to right. do this, so you're putting it on that, and that that's the issue. But long term, you know, if this has enough goodwill with the fans and the audience, and it and it pays off, and you know, things change when we're not in a pandemic, and they can keep highlighting and showcasing these talents, maybe things you know turn out differently. I don't know. Yeah, I, I would say yeah. this. Um, the Thunder Rosa and in Rio match is, for the woman's perspective, is so big that it's like it. We'll, we'll see what they do. I wonder what I wonder what intrigue it gets because you know you know we're talking about two of the three you know most important women in AEW history um, between those two. So or four, if you, depending on how you feel about uh, Brit in, in the commitment to talking same as opposed to in the ring, but in the ring at least it's, it, those are two of the three. So. Um, we'll see. We'll see what they. Um, we we'll see what this does for them. And it, so, initially. so to go over uh, to round two, we had uh, Tyna Arconti against Nyla Rose. Uh, pretty physical match here. Um, I, I, think, I liked this. Yeah, I think Ty Conti gets better every time, and uh, I, I like that Kenny has bestowed the V triggers upon her. Um, yeah, I, um, it's been. It feels like I haven't seen Nyla in forever. So um, it was good seeing her. She um she looked she looked good. Um, there there was some um, it, it was weird 
it was weird. Like, I don't know if they're like nerfing, not, well, not nerfing is not necessarily the real word, like demonstifying, um, Nyla or making her more vulnerable to have a more competitive match or to quote unquote carry the match like a la Alan Angels and Kenny Omega or if this is, um, where she is now. I'm, I, I guess we'll figure it out sooner or later, but, um, you know, they they gave her a lot. Like she kicked out a few things that she that she, she kicked out of like a dirt. Death Valley driver right, on, on the, the fucking yes, ramp yes. or whatever. And then she and, had to stack her up with a with a lager bomb to, to beat her after that. So they they did kind of say like this was their like third time meeting, and every time that she's fought Nyla, she's got a little bit closer. Okay. I actually thought Nyla was on upset alert here, but she didn't lose. Uh, I I thought this was a solid enough match though. Yeah. Um. The next match, it was Emi Sakura versus Yuka Sakizaki. And I got to say it, through two rounds, I think Emi Sakura has been the MVP yep. of this tournament. Yes. She's been awesome. Like, take no shit, veteran, uh, got her own swag about her. Um, and I think she put in – they gave her two great opponents, uh, and Vinny and then Yuka Sakizaki, and she was like, all right. I'm going to show y'all, you know, who may not have necessarily dug the Freddie Mercury thing, uh, <laughs> what it's about when I'm dead serious. And I got to say, I liked it a lot more. Yeah. Um, I think the, real, the only real time she ever showed any bit of it was her uh, match with Riho at Full Gear. I believe it was Full Gear. Um, but mm-hmm. for the most part, she's mostly just been a comedy character and like, she can still really wrestle even, even if she does mostly gotta move stuff, um, goofy gotta move stuff. But like, yeah, um, she's still, she's still, she's still damn good still. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I like the Oscar match more or sorry, the Vinny match more. Sorry. Um, Same. Uh, I did but- too. Yeah, I, I still think it was another level above. There's a lot of goofiness and shenanigans with, you know, um, May and um, the other uh, uh, um, third, uh, ring third for her with with interference or whatever else and whatever. But, like, you know, there it comes at the base where she, like, the last, these close stretches of the match is, like, she gets serious and, like, it's it's, it's very fast, crisp, and, and um, chops start flying off the shelf. So, it, so she's, she's been really fun so far. Yeah. Um, so uh, up next, we had uh, Aja Kong versus Rio Mizunami. This s- turn it started and it was like snail's pace. <laughs> uh, Aja Kong was not moving around very well in this match at all, and then it just slowly started. They just started throwing bombs yep. uh, at each other, and I this turned into a sneaky good match here with a very creative finish that. I really enjoyed it. Josh, uh, I think, probably got a real good kick out of this uh, as it looked like some 80s New Japan finish or something. But uh, it was very creative. Uh, they ended up getting uh, Hikaru Shida involved. Uh, and it has, it had, <laughs> has Shida hold the fucking trash trash can. She's standing there just blown like, hold on, you just used me. Like, <laughs> right. like is, this, is this what they mean by tool? Like that shit. Yeah. It's like, am I a tool? And then, like, yeah, um, I agree with with how you said how the match went. Like, they they were trying to do certain uh, things with like you know, s- selling the wares of the battle. Um, Rio Mizunami was trying to like work over um, Achikong's knee, which is like you don't need to do that. She's already immobile, pretty much. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't really do that already. Like, <laughs> uh, but anyway. Like, so then uh, they started going for uh, they start throwing bombs as you, as you mentioned, um, and then they end up outside the ring and they tease the count out and um, they end up back where it looks like Aja is immediately is going to roll in and either but she's too slow, right? But the <laughs> weird thing is like she threw Rio's head into a into the into the trash can and then she just no sells the shit. And yeah. then, like, just goes right to the top rope and then drops the guillotine leg, leg yeah. drop right onto uh, Aja's head and gets the count. <laughs> I was like, Bitch, I was hollering. I saw it and I was like, because I, I already got spoiled on the finish, but because yeah. uh, I already knew it was some type of count out or whatever else, given how y'all were talking on the thread. And I was like, okay, whatever. So then it happens. I'm like, oh, that's shrewd. Aja was like, I am not, like, giving away, like, my 
my win, my big win, t- like down the road, like in Tokyo Joshi Pro, when like she does it, she does Tokyo Joshi Pro like every blue moon, like maybe like a handful of times a year, maybe less. Where it's like, I'm not going to give away like that win to American audience. Like I am going to draw a house with this and like do that in Tokyo Joshi Pro, like on a, maybe a January, probably not a January fourth show, but like one of these bigger shows that they do. Like yeah. when she comes back. She like when they have that match eventually a year two years from now like I'll do it then but not for y'all so like go ahead and beat me uh, Mizunami it's fine and then like y'all can have that match and you know quite frankly like I don't think Aja really you know she she was coming over here but like in the, in the quarantine I don't know maybe she's just like I have no interest in coming America over. nah not right now it's like nah you, I you, mean she so. did America in the nineties like. Yeah, but there was no. But there she was did, no. She did hit the Yurkin. Yeah, but now, yeah. but if she comes over now, she has to come back, and then like she has to like quarantine for two weeks. Ain't nobody trying to do that, except for young people. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, why? Like, she don't care. She already did it. You know, two mm. decades ago, three Not decades quarantine. ago. There wasn't no. There wasn't no COVID nineteen back twenty years ago. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just think. Uh, like she saved that part. She's like, I'll you know do that. And I thought that was I thought it was shrewd, shrewd business. So I liked it. Um, and uh, you know, there's either way. Like uh, Mizunami and, and Yuka, this is gonna be a good ass um, uh, final for that side of the bracket. Um, obviously, we all think that the odds on favorite is Yuka. Obviously, so we will see. Um, I I don't I don't know the the schedules, but I wouldn't count out Rio Mizunami here. So. I mean, she's um, super charismatic. She's one of the most charismatic wrestlers in the world. But um, you know, given you know, you know, we got Brit still around or whatever else. Like you could kind of see it with like, all right, let's say you they know, they got Brit versus Nyla next. Yeah. So it's like, man, this, like my brag is completely blown up. But I'm saying, like, you think we like this, right? Let's say she gets past Nyla, then like she, I mean, she could possibly you know get the Thunder Rosa match again. Then she gets Yuka match again. Like, if you look at like people that had programs of people, like this is setting up to be Brit's tournament. Even though I still think like she hasn't been impressive yet, but still, it's like narratively as far as programs and having things you know cut promos about and the history they can go back on or whatever else to add to this tournament. Like all the through lines are still pointing towards Brit. Mm-hmm. I would like her to get to have better matches in the ring, but you know, we'll see. Yeah, um, then the next match was Britt Baker and Maddie Renkowski, who was a injury replacement for the Anna J. We found out the Anna J has a shoulder injury, um, where she'll be out six to 12 months, maybe. Do you just call her the Anna J? I always call her the Anna J. Okay, anyway, yeah, she, she, <laughs> yeah, um, Britt whooped the jobber. Yeah, not, not really much. Gave this her, like, is probably the worst spots. match. Probably the worst match of the tournament, but it was probably squash. was. It was. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're, we're set up with Riho versus Thunder Rosa, Nyla versus Britt, and on the Japanese side, it's Yuka Sakazaki versus Rio Mizunami. And, yeah, so we'll see. I believe the finals will be on Dynamite on March 3rd. YouTube will have the... Uh, on March 1st, I believe they'll have another show for the U.S. finals. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep covering it here. Uh, after that, we got a training video of Shaq and Jay. They were on a basketball court, and I saw – I know this is a pro wrestling show, but I saw one of the most absurd, unrealistic things I've ever seen on a wrestling show when Shaq was hitting three-pointers in this video, James. Um. Okay, you called it what a workout. The fuck? You called it a workout video with both of them. I would say that like Shaq stood and and took a couple of threes uh, on camera till he made one while Jay did the working out. Yeah, like Shaq so, was on a polo and jeans or 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 some type of long pants. So you know, one much working out going on. Not to say that he should be working out. I don't care. I'm just saying like I don't think that's accurate description of what we saw. And also, I don't think this was uh, as good as, like, the... Um, I don't think this was as impressive of showing off, like, what those two can do. Like, I think you get more out of, like, you know, sending Jay back to the gym to lift and sweat. Um, so yeah. so we need Jay to be out here like Butch Reed, essentially, and li- uh, lift him. Uh, 
sure. I don't. I don't. I, that doesn't. I, that doesn't re- register anything to me. But yeah, I, I thought that I thought the Jade in the weight room thing is more impressive than this. Like, I think that more correlates to she's a badass or she's super tough and is like, oh, she got a jumper. What that's got to do with fighting? <laughs> <laughs> like, we we all know plenty of people that can hoop, but they can't fight for shit. So you know what I'm saying? Like that's kind of you know that's that's kind of how they left me. Is like okay, cool. You got to handle what? Can, can, but can you handle? <laughs> like you know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> uh, Cody and Red Velvet versus Shaq and Jade. Uh, what do you think about this, Josh? Um, I mean. I think it's fine. Uh, obviously, they were angling to, you know, do something that was going to be like high profile with Brandy and Cody. And I, I think ultimately the whole point of this entire thing is twofold. I think it's really to establish Jade Cargill as a superstar and, mm-hmm. you know, to get a lot of great exposure for the company via Shaq's notoriety. Um, they've had to kind of switch things up, obviously, because of, you know, Brandy and her pregnancy and everything like that. And they, I think they, what, they had to change things because NBA All-Star Weekend ended up, you know, kind of going Ended up this. falling on the 7th. So, Revolution's on the 7th, and then they booked the All-Star game on the 7th, and Shaq has TNT commitments. Okay. So, I mean, I, I don't know. The match is not going to be good, obviously. Like, um, <laughs> it, it's not going to be good. Like, I just can't imagine. It, this is not Ronda Rousey. You know, doing a match with Kurt Angle, Triple H, and Stephanie. Like, uh, I, I don't know what to really expect of it. I, I guess I'm just kind of thinking it's probably going to be funny. Um, cause Shaq's funny. I don't know, man. Like, it's not going to be yeah. good. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Uh, Arn Anderson got himself in some shit this week. Um, where for he was no commenting. Yeah. Uh, for saying, uh, but the thing was, he was right. Uh, what he's would he right, say? But he's also on a, but he's also completely unaware. It's like you're also like pointing out like something is going on in your own program that you're a part of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's like, the fans don't come here to like. He was commenting on Bad Bunny and WWE. He was like the fans don't come here to see these Hollywood people or whatever. Um, I and correct. I did not come to to, to see Shaq. Uh, you know, doing <laughs> matches. I, no, you I missed I, it. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. What? He's like, no, you didn't come here to see this. Ho- people didn't come here to see this Hollywood shit. You're right. People did not come to see one of the greatest Los Angeles Lakers of all time. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Go, go, go ahead. Um. Yeah. I. I yeah. But I. I I, mean, I don't gotta, know what the fuck to think of this. <laughs> like, like, it's it's like, sort of like what I said earlier about Edge. It's like when I was like, you know, you'd be a dummy not to do it because you got to do it, but it doesn't mean it's great. I think that's kind of the same thing with Shaq. It's like they got access to Shaq. Shaq's wanted to wrestle forever. They're they're looking for ways to expand their audience. So you got to do it. Yeah. You just got to try and do it the best way possible that still has credibility. And I, I don't know if this is going to have any. Well, this is what I'll say. Given who's involved in this, involved in this, and who was involved in it until it got switched, and then who also still got involved to it after it switched up because of the pregnancy, I see TNT having a wrestling property. I see inside the NBA. I think of the yep. people that watch that show. I see Shaq. I see two fine black women. And then I see Cody Rose. I'm like, what the fuck does Cody have to do with any of this? I don't know. <laughs> Who is that? Oh, that's Dusty Rose's son. Cool. I don't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> no offense. I like Cody. But it's like, for the people that they're, that they're trying to lure with this. Because there is a clear strategy going on well, here. Well, the only real thing is like, well, who could they have put in the Cody position? And you're like, that's their fault. They could have got Scorpio Sky up in the bullpen <laughs> like, <laughs> like six months ago. They fucking off on this. <laughs> like, that's on them. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell them. Uh, but yeah, like, you know, the match, like, I'm, I'm a, as a wise man once said, That may suck. It sounds cool. <laughs> we can end the speculation. And- <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause> 
and then we gonna see. <laughs> hey, man. Like, I ain't got... Look, my, my expectations are real low for this match, because, and I think it's the best way to play it, because if I... if I It's not, it's not gonna be no traditional... Try to go viral. Yeah. Like that, that, remember, that's what remember, that's what I was saying. Right. Try to go viral. It's gonna go viral regardless. It could be good, it could be it could be awful. Uh but what I was gonna say is like, look, don't come out here, Cody, trying to, you know <laughs> Don't come the out here. Like, trying, to wrestle. Trying, to, trying to lock up. Like you remember he's trying to get Orange Cassidy <laughs> locked up? Look, nobody cares about that shit, Cody. Go the fuck on with that nonsense, man. Just go out just come out here. And and try to get straight to smoking hundred miles an hour straight to the shit the smoking mirrors straight like to hey the Cody it's on you. you 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 love doing the smoking mirrors this is this right. is your thing pull them <laughs> look, all out you pull been, everything look, out you have been you have been trying to be in a, or a W's Triple H for for the past th- or two years right. You have been at it by doing all the Triple H and things that Triple H has done with NXT and all the you know and with some of these matches. If you think you really Triple H, you will go out here and try to have your sports entertainment classic like he had at WrestleMania 34. It ain't even got to be as good. It just got to be entertaining. It's on you. Yeah, it's on you. It's on <laughs> you, bring out, man. Bring out your mom. Bring out your brother. <laughs> Bring out everyone you have to. Bring out Tony Khan. Bring out whoever you want. Like it's all on the table. Whatever you got to do to 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 make this shit work and to right. try to go viral. Right. It, this is it. Right. I know. Oh, I, oh what is y'all me doing here? Like, yes. What? Exactly. <laughs> yes. Oh my God! He came to the ring with Charles Barkley. What? I think. I think part of it is like Yao Ming. You guys were asking like, what does Cody have to do with this? Like. Cody's this giant WCW, you know, yes. Monday Night Wars mark, and he's like, "This is my Malone, this is my Leno, yeah, this is my yeah. Rodman." But it's different. It's different when like it was Malone and it, it was Malone and it was Rodman and it was Hulk fucking Hogan. You are that's, Cody Rose. No, that, that's, you don't that's get who it. he sees that's, himself he as. He sees himself as Hogan. That's what I'm saying. My, no, he thinks he's Hulk Hogan. Maybe, Bro, he wears no, a fucking even, weight belt. He I'm, thinks he's Hogan. Hold on, I'm not even saying. I'm not even trying to shade him for him believing himself to be that or something of that thing. Right? I'm saying he's he's targeting a, a specific demographic. <laughs> There is nothing that he attracts in there's nothing there is nothing that he does for that specific demographic himself. He's Chad, Dusty Rhodes' son. Yeah. Black people That's, love Dusty Rhodes. They love yes. Dusty Rhodes. What but you're also talking about oh He has a Black Olds, History Month shirt. Olds don't watch this show. <laughs> I'm talking a- look. The people that are watching that show are gonna be people that are like his age or younger in black men. Presumably. I do not think that Cody that Dusty Rose's son draws in that particular way. No shade. Nobody else in AEW draws that particular way either. I'm just <laughs> saying I I I feel like there may be somebody else they could have used or whatever else, but obviously, you know, it's all weird and it's just, uh, you know, it's the same thing with the Tyson stuff. Like, they're just trying to get a little bit of, you know, press or whatever else. And, and ultimately, if they're just trying to get a little bit of press and they can get a couple people to tune in and watch, you know, the, the, what they got going on before they get to this, cool. Um, but my point is, like, the rep- if, if this is what they're trying to do with the uh, Inside the NBA audience, they might want to start looking into their representation as far as their men's single roster. Like, you got a, a, a Hobbs, you got a uh, Scorpio Sky, you got a Ricky Starks. You can get, you could have got Ricky Starks up in the bullpen. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. This is Derek's O'Reilly Auto Parts story. After the third time jump starting my car, I finally realized my battery was dying. So I stopped by O'Reilly to have it checked. They tested it right there in the parking lot. It was bad real bad but they helped me find the right battery for my car and even installed it for free now my car starts like new oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. and it had them on some fly shit and people would have and that, and that ring started to write up um 
you know, so inside NBA motherfuckers alley. He look, he could have been out here saying, I out, I out dress uh, Russell Westbrook for real. I ain't wearing nothing crazy. My shit's fly. He could have done that. So you know, th- <laughs> there were options, but they decided to go with Cody. And I'm telling you, I don't, I don't, I don't see it. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I just don't I, see it. I, I think with Cody, you I look at Cody and be like, Floyd, oh, he ha- he has hey, a black wife. That Floyd, that's the appeal. Floyd's gonna be so mad at me. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, that, that that that's the appeal. You 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 show you show him being a family man with with with, with Brandy and all that, and be like, oh, okay, so that that's supposed to be, you know, Brandy is his ticket. Maybe, 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 because you know, well, well. well well, whatever, whatever. I'm not gonna go down talking about Brandy. We, we've done it. We've covered enough ground on this. Um, but yeah, expectations are low. He gotta have, but he gotta have a, him a, his sports match or his sports entertainment classic here or something sports entertainment banger here. If you don't do it here, you know I don't know what all this run in and stuff he's been doing his whole career was for. Like this should be this should be light work. The this Super Bowl work. right here. Right, the, the the Super Bowl of smoke and mirrors. Right, what you do all that training for? Yeah, fuck you, get paid for. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so up next we got uh, Orange Cassidy squashing Luther. <laughs> <laughs> next, next. <laughs> um, as a wise man once said, "Who fucking cares?" Yeah. Um. <laughs> So up next, uh, Taz and Brian Cage and Hook came out. Uh, Ricky Starks wasn't there due to the issues in Texas. Will Howes wasn't there either. Um, they challenged Sting to come out. Sting came out with his bat. Taz told him that he relies on his bat, but without the bat, he's nothing. So he put the bat down, uh, and he threw his jacket. And uh, essentially, he was like, fuck it. I'm just going to swing at the biggest guy here. And he swings that cage. And he's running it with Cage a little bit. Then the goon, Hook, grabs the bat. And he starts choking Sting with his own bat. Because, of course, Hook does that. Um, Sting fights off Hook. <laughs> and then Brian Cage takes the advantage and power bombs Sting. To hell. To hell. I love this. <laughs> I was scared as fuck. I, do tell i think that was the plan was like oh my god it's, it's supposed to be like the similar to the um to when daniel bryan came back and then uh owens insane stomped the mud out of him immediately and you, you're like oh yes he's back but oh my god his neck and you remember his neck injury or whatever so with me it was like this would have worked a lot better had you not announced this match like set like seven years ago <laughs> Right, like, had the match not been just been in question still, and then you like you worried about like you know is he or isn't he, even though we know he already is, like, and then eventually like you know we, there I don't see the need to given how it's going now, I don't see the need to have announced it so early. Like if they were going on a path they were going on like they have been, and then announced the match after that, I find it right. more more intriguing. But mm-hmm. whatever, this is how they did it. Um, it didn't it didn't work for me because it's like I already know he's going to wrestle. So like, what the fuck's a power bomb? Um, but yeah, yeah. But to me, I don't think he's really wrestling. I thought, it, well, based on everything that they told us, I was like, it's going to be a cinematic, cinematic match. Cinematic match. And then when you he went out there and took cinematic matches, no, not me. I wouldn't. If I was take, why, why the fuck would I bump? <laughs> I, I, I think I think the Undertaker took <laughs> bumps. <laughs> Every time we communicate about the kind of wrestling you want to do, Josh, I'm just less and less like enthused for you how your career goes. I'm like, bro, he, he don't want to do shit. I just do nothing ass motherfucker. I don't want to watch this shit. He's my whole boss support. But god damn. This man about to be a headlock master, bitch. Yes. Yes. You know, every every time we're like working out in class, Saber I'll be reason. like I'll be like the last one doing like our sets or whatever, and I'm like, "How many? We we're supposed to do 15? Like, yeah. And I was like, "All right, I just I didn't want to do too many." <laughs> oh my god! Self snitching. Just I got yeah. My nickname is just enough because I do just enough. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, no. I mean, I didn't think he was gonna take a bump. I mean, they got crap. Yeah, I was, and sh- I was shocked. shit like that. 
Oh, it was scary I just figured, I, One, I guess because I didn't know it was a cinematic match, I thought it was like, oh, he's going to wrestle, so whatever, he's going to take bumps. And then it's like, oh, he took a bump. Like, that, that, that's how it worked for me. That's how it worked out for me. I didn't think he's taking any bumps. He's got spinal stenosis. And- so you thought he was going to be like, uh, <laughs> you thought he was going to be on that Bret Hart program in 2010? Oh, man. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, he clearly you know, moves better than Bret did at that point, but I just didn't yeah. think he was taking bumps. I thought he was just going to walk and brawl. I, I, I'm convinced that Sting lied to the WWE, and, and he was like, yeah, I don't want y'all to hit. I don't want to get hit in the face with the sledgehammer anymore. So, uh, <laughs> he got uh, hit in the face with the sledgehammer one damn time. That's oh, enough, ain't it? That's enough, ain't it? it, was, it wasn't <laughs> and he had either. to shake the man's he hand after. He didn't actually get hit in the face with the sledgehammer. He got hit with the hand that was wrapped around the sledgehammer. Whatever. I, like, I, I don't I don't like sledgehammers. <laughs> uh, that, that, that I'm sure there is a no sledgehammer. Uh, you know, as Silver, John Silver alluded to, Sting doesn't fuck with sledgehammers. So He said that? It, it, it was like on BT. They were trying to recruit Sting. They were talking about the idea of it, and, and uh, I believe Reynolds had like a a sledgehammer or something. He was like, "Hey, don't bring that!" Like, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, very interesting. Uh, so up next, I'm still trying to figure out what the fuck that throne was doing there at uh, Double or Nothing. <laughs> still trying to figure that shit out. Why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's you know remember uh, the aesthetic. What, what was it? Uh, remember like some of those broken, um, broken Hardy matches where he's like, "Oh, it's a it's an elaborated boat." It's like, "Oh, it's a throne." Like, what? What? What are you doing here? I don't understand. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Um. So. Up next, uh, Eddie Kingston cut a promo about the main event. He said Moxley is a demon. He needs to get rid of the most. Can't get rid of Moxley by drinking, by pills, or with women. So he needs to get rid of him by beating him. Tweaking. Be 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 a long time before that happens, sir. You, you you might as well like become friends with him and try to tag team with him, which I think one day will happen. So. Up next, um, Kenny Omega, Don Callis, and Michael Nakazawa went to the kids park. Um, Kenny was reading them a story uh, because the kids love Kenny Omega. Uh, as you know, they demonstrated uh, he was reading a story from the Young Bucks book. He read about January 4th, 2018, where him and Chris Jericho at the Tokyo Dome caused business to greatly increase. Then um, Don Callis told Kenny that it's time to leave. Kids still wanted to play with Kenny, but he had to go. They were told that they could play with Michael Nakazawa. They said they hate Michael Nakazawa, and they all beat him up. Yeah. Um, I, I thought that this skit was, like, it, it was cute. You know, it had, like, and, like, had insidery stuff and all that. I just didn't see the point of it. Like, yeah, yeah it was just goofy. <laughs> just, it, yeah, just, it was just goofy. Yeah. I've, look. I've seen Kenny do worse with Michael Nakazawa during target segments, so, so whatever. Um, it is on his worst behavior around Michael Nakazawa. <laughs> <laughs> um, so after that, we got the Young Bucks against Santana and Ortiz, and this was awesome up until like towards the end of the match. Like the first half of this match was like incredible, like n- yeah. lightning fast work. Yep. Both teams pulling out in. Innovative offense, PMP uh, in particular, everything was so smooth, fast, and crisp. Like it was like, damn, I want to see like this, I I like this like better than their pay per view match. Kind of, um, I I did, yeah, 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 I agree. Um, and it was kind of a shock finish, like that that they did where um the one of the bucks, like I believe it was Nick caught um. Uh, Ortiz slipping essentially, and then Ortiz was like, "I can't believe that fucking happened." And um, the Bucks' uh, parents were ringside, so of course they ended up doing like a big beat down on them. But uh, what did you guys think about this whole thing? Uh, I thought this match was awesome. I thought, I mean, I pretty much echo the same sentiments that you had. Uh, everyone like had their working shoes on. Um, many times I've watched uh, PMP. Uh, with my girlfriend and she's just not a fan of theirs. And I don't understand why. Cause I'm like, they're incredible, but I think it has something to do with the aesthetic. Just like they don't to her. She doesn't think they look like stars. They just kind of look like goons in, you know, the inner circle, which is kind of what they are. Mm-hmm. But then she was like, Oh, 
they're really good. And I was like, yeah, they're one of the best tag teams that are out there. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that th- they've had some standout performances, you know, matches with the Bucks, you know, the, the match with uh, uh, best, best friends friend. in the parking lot, lot brawl. But this was kind of like, this is the first time I felt like I was seeing the, the guys from Impact that I know about, you know? Yeah, I, I like right. how, like, every so often on this show, you have, like, thrown shade at, at Megan. You just like, oh she her taste, boo, thumbs down. Like every so often you've you have you have thrown that out here. Just 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 for the record. I, I peep what you're doing. Anyway, she has so- she has good taste. She's dating me. <laughs> <laughs> Clip Mo- that. Moving Clip on. that. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on. Um oh. very very good action. It it was weird because look at thinking of NXT from um from um, Wednesday as well is like there were the main event also had the same thing where it's like he had these great workers had the work shoes on do it, having like fast fluid quick wrestling or whatever else and a match he was like I wish it went longer damn it uh, both both situations like very fun match um, I want to see it again obviously and maybe that was the point of doing it so fast that you want to see it again and you don't and you don't feel like you know uh, the loss is like a hundred percent um, it doesn't like really sink in in the way like a definitive, you know, big match would have would have been. Maybe that's what, Buck, what the point was. Especially Buzz with, Gear, with the Buzz Gear was hard as fuck. Um, they they did like a beat down with the Inner Circle. They were beating on um, Nick and Matt. So Mega Callus, uh, Anderson, and Gals were watching backstage, and they did the spoof of WWE where they were watching at a weird angle. Kenny was dressed like a pirate. I've also heard him dress. Uh, I heard someone on. Twitter say he was dressed like an undercover cop at Woodstock. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this shit was funny. He had, he had the boots on, uh, that, that, the ass kickers, and uh, some jeans, and then like the pirate shirt. Of course, just more ridiculous by the week. Fucking hilarious. Um, and they basically took their time coming out. Omega grabs, uh, gets kind of stopped by Callus. Al, Gals and they're interested in take their time as like they're beating the fuck out of the Bucks. Brandon Cutler comes out uh, to save the Bucks, but he gets destroyed uh, by Hager. And after that, Jericho has Nick in the Lion Tamer. Matt's uh, MJF puts Matt in the arm bar. Bucks were tapping, and then Gallows and Anderson came out to make the save. And after that, Jericho was yelling at Mr. Buck. And Mr. Buck shoved uh, Jericho, which was fucking hilarious. You know, Jericho always r- trying to fight somebody's parents or shit like that. Yeah, and also, like, Jericho about as old as that man, too, so. <laughs> Maybe. Another, another part. Maybe. Why, why does Mr. Jackson look like Bruce Jenner? Bruce um, Jenner. I'm not trying to make any funny jokes, but he looks like a motherfucker. That, but he does look like the motherfucker on, on the Wheaties box. He really did. And I was like, wow, that no one's, I wonder if he was brought that up to him because it was, yeah, I, I've never, I, I never thought of that. Um, but it, it was good to see the, the, the composer of all the great music on being the elite, uh, finally show up. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, after that, what are you um, upset they didn't get heat on the, on the, on the dad. Uh, I mean, they, they, Jericho yelled at him and they beat his yeah, kids yeah, up in that, front that's of him. That's not what I mean. I mean, like, heat on the dad, similar to when we were talking about Cody and, and, um, and getting, getting heat on the dog. Heat on the dog. Heat on the dog. Like, <laughs> I thought we were going to get heat on the dad. I thought we were going to get some, uh, some John Senior, some John Cena, uh, Senior, uh, type of heat, <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah, I guess. Uh, you know, I, I didn't see that personally, but, uh, I guess, yeah, they could have got some heat on the dad. You know, um, after that, uh, Cody and Brandy did their pregnancy reveal, and I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Because I thought this was going to take up like a bunch of time, it but it only ended up going like, yeah, it ended up only going thirty seconds, and Cody went to commentary. You know what I noticed? Every time Cody's uh, music starts, there's always like splashing like liquid, and it's red, and I'm always uh-huh. like, "That's so fitting because this man loves to blade." Um, <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> but but this time it started it started pink and I know that it never starts pink it's always red because he likes to blade and I was like oh that's the gender reveal they made it pink because he's having a girl <laughs> wow 
I yeah, um, this quick simple thing. I think that like um, as a standard uh, practice, like uh, gender reveals are kind of eh, but whatever they did it. They and whatever he was happy, so that was good. Like you know, a lot one of the biggest reasons why like gender reveals kind of like I don't know what's the point of this is like we're in a misogynistic society and like when you had that dude talking about I want a boy and go blue and all of the shit and then all of a sudden that peak come out and you see the boo-boo face it's like alright so now you gotta show this to your daughter like 8 years from now and be like see how bummed out I was that you, I thought you were gonna have a PP and you don't like so <laughs> uh, so whatever like he was happy so good so good for them yeah um up next they showed Dory Funk Jr. and Marty Funk and the crowd his wife um, shouts out to Terry Funk, who sent out a tweet this week, uh, saying good luck to Moxley and Kenny in their death match. Oh my fucking God. It's pretty funny. Uh, check it out. Um, uh, Dory Funk Jr. there, you know, I, I imagine that Dave Meltzer loved this because he loves Dory Funk Jr. John, it's Terry. I heard, I heard he having a death <laughs> match. Just wanted to reach out and hope, wish you the best. Like, that's funny. That, that is funny. I, I really wish Terry Funk could, like, cu- could come in or do something, the like, last time before, I saw him, before the death match. The last time I saw him was the build up to WrestleMania 32 with, um, Moxley, or no, sorry, yeah. Bros and, um, and um and yeah. uh, Lesnar. Lesnar. That's the last time I remember. He's like, and if I, he's like, you're the best in America. And he's like, and if I had a, you know, if I had a son, I'd be just like you. If I had a daughter, and he walks off off screen, I fucking howl. <laughs> like <laughs> Terry <laughs> Funk was still fucking hilarious in 2016. Yeah, um, yeah, I I would really like to see to see that. Um, uh, and Moxley's given. We'll, we'll talk about it later. But of course, we got the, death, the announcement of the death match. But Moxley's given interviews like. Uh, on Observer Radio, basically saying, "Yeah, man, you know, a lot of times they wanted us to to build up all this crazy shit that we was never actually going to do. But like, I ain't got to worry about that. Like, we we bought the light <laughs> wild the fuck out. <laughs> and it's like you think of the match they had before at Full Gear uh, in 2019. It's like, oh god, I'm more, uh. like I, I'm never going to get like the actual classic wrestling." <laughs> Between those two, I thought about that. I thought I thought about that, but like, dude, I, it, it's gone too far. That's the match I wanted, man. And then like, you know, the the elbow got you know got had to get drained again. And then like, we got that barbaric shit at full gear two years ago. And now we're getting this. Is like, bro, the next match they're gonna have gonna be like a a gun match. They a gun match. Yes, put them out in the Hardy compound with two double with two uh. <laughs> Sawed off shotguns and they just go nuts. That's the match next. That's a th- that's so, that's the real blow off. So is it like a ladder match and then the gun is on top? The winner gets to use the gun. No, like, or you get to climb up and use the gun, no. or they just start the match with the guns. No, it is two killers put out in the woods with guns, and <laughs> the first person that gets shot and killed loses. <laughs> so so a, duel. a gun match. No, match. ain't no do, ain't no take, you know, <laughs> ain't no take, uh, 10 paces and turn around or it's quickest to the draw. It's, it's just, it's just who's the first person to get hit with hot shit? Loses. Who, who got the fire? You know, um, so up next, we got FTR against the Side Al brothers. So, um, take it away, Josh. Uh, yeah, all you, Josh. Yeah, so I haven't, uh, seen them in a little bit because I've been, uh, I, I've been having an uh, inner ear issue, but I actually talked about today. I'm going back to class Thursday, so that's good. Why are you laughing? Nice. nice. I forgot that I was on camera. <laughs> that, that, that man got that Ric Flair. <laughs> no, like every time you say you had an inner ear thing, I said to you, oh, that wasn't cussed. Uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> I was not concussed, so, I can assure so, you. So, so for me, I was like, I thought about it again, I was like, Oh, then that's because I started busting out laughing and I beat my mic and then you're like, why are you laughing at me? I'm like, oh, that makes me funny. Play the joke. Like, yes, Josh has told us that he has not been trading the rest for a while because of the inner ear thing. And I'm like, oh, this wasn't cuss. That man, that man that bangs his head on that mat and, you know, he's in a dark room somewhere trying to listen to soothing and sounds and low tones and shit. He, he, no. But, you know, get well soon though, Josh. No, I feel fine. I just I have bad allergies and stuff like that. Uh but it's been handled. I took my steroids, took my uh 
antibiotics. And, yeah, I'm on the gas, so I'm good oh, to go. God. But uh, this match, I really, really, really like this match. I felt like um, the the match that happened earlier on the show was clearly the better match. But this was sort of like – and that was like a more modern match. This was sort of more like a high-end version of like a territory-style like um, Southern tag. And you kind of – and clearly mm-hmm. like that's what FTR are, are good at. But I don't think they always have the right team to kind of like bring out the fast-paced, you know, babyface action. And that's sort of what Matt, uh, Matt and Mike were able to do uh, very cohesively. I've I've trained with Mike, but I've actually never seen a match of Mike, so I didn't know. I mean, I assumed it'd be good, but I didn't know what to expect. And uh, they gave him a lot of shine, which is really cool. And um, you know, this this reminded me of like the Four Horsemen against like the Fantastics or something like that. It was really really cool. And um, I and in fact, you know, I think it was probably one of my favorite like FTR matches uh, in AEW. I mean, I mean, everyone says they're good, and I guess like I give them the pass. But this is like one of the first times for me <laughs> that I felt like I was watching the guys that we used to watch on NXT wrestle American Alpha, where it felt mm-hmm. like oh, they're stringing their shit together really well, like they used to. Uh-huh. So I I thought the match was great, and I'm also glad to kind of see like you know Matt. They, I think they want to do something with him, but I don't know what it is. And I hope they bring Mike back because then at least he has. I know that they're like they have a lot of tag teams, but at least he's kind of got like a unit or something like that. Mm-hmm. So I think that'd be cool. But I don't. I don't know where they could go with it long term. Yeah, I, I like the match. It just feels short. It was really short. So, um, but, yeah, but they did, but they yeah. put a lot in a short amount yeah, of time. Yeah, I did enjoy the action. Yeah, yeah. Um. So. No Tully uh, there because Tully is in Texas. Uh, but Tully will be back next week. Lost in the Sting talk. Tully Blanchard is wrestling uh, next week. I'm sorry. What? Yeah. Yeah, he's wrestling. And I don't really. Uh, yeah, my, Wrestling who? He, he's in the six man. He's in the six man. Oh, my fucking God. With uh, Jurassic Express. And so how about. How about Tully it's, and a, it's a regular trios match, though, right? It's not like a tournament yeah. type. Okay, whatever. He's, he'll get in and like, do a couple spots with like Marvel Stunt. And yeah. it'll probably it'll make, it'll make Jim Cornette want to die. But yeah, all right. How about this for, for you saying I slighted my girlfriend all episode? She told me, she was like, you know, Tully's wrestling. And I was like, no, he's not. She's like, yes, he is. And I said, there is no way that they would have <laughs> Tully Blanchard wrestle. You are mistaken. And then, and then she pulled it out and showed me, and I was completely wrong, and I was flabbergasted. I I didn't know he was wrestling, but now that you mentioned, but because I, I it slipped my mind the um, Jurassic Express thing, but it makes sense. And it's like we've seen him get involved with a bunch of these matches, and like the knees, look, his knees are better than Asano's knees. <laughs> mm-hmm. So for me, like you know, he'll do a couple things with Marco Stunt. And that'll be fine. Um, but, yeah, I wasn't expecting it at all. Yeah. And we've seen, we've seen, like, you know, we had, we had Rock and Roll Express. We we had, um, we had Ricky Morton do a fucking, um, was it Canadian Destroyer? Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll send old timers out there to, uh, to get it done. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but he's really, really old. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's up there yeah. with the red light. Yeah, I know. He's. I think what, that this 60s? is asking late sixties, sixty-seven. Yeah, he looks old, he looks older than that. I think like with COVID yeah, looks and everything, I think they're really asking for trouble. I, I mean, I'm sh- he, he's done look older than Flair. Come on now, Flair's like what seventy-one. Flair looks old as fuck too. It, I'm sad to see right. Flair they don't look TV. as old as Flair though. Not not far off. Mm. Here's the thing. I'm gonna give him like the. I'm sure they probably know what they're doing. They probably have something safe planned. I assume, but it's a ba- I, to me, it's kind of a bad look. Like we saw Jerry Lawler almost die on television. Like I don't know, man. Yeah, um, maybe he does. Does the Lawler bike pile driver that was working against him? No. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, if it was karma, then why didn't he die? Yeah, I, oh, I just yeah. like to. I just like to mention that the first Blanchard to wrestle in AEW is Tully, <laughs> and not Tessa. <laughs> oh God! What if this is the gateway? Who, right. who would have seen that what, coming? What if, what if this is the gateway? I think that would have already happened. That's if you don't count all in, which I kind of do. Oh yeah, yeah. Then that's Ring of Honor. 
It's on their, it's on their pay per view. Oh, we it, got is, the uh, main it event. Is by One of the great, like, just like years later, just fucking hilarious. Hoodwinked. But, um, we saw Moxley Phoenix and Lance Archer, uh, take on the Butcher and the Blade and Eddie Kingston. Um, and this was an awesome, another awesome main event. Uh, Ray Phoenix out of his mind. Lance Archer, the babyface in peril, which is funny. Um, because he's like six, seven. Um, and I, I thought it was a lot of, you know, uh, I, I think Eddie did like one of those, uh, suplexes I like, one of those Ken Kobashi style suplexes. Um, I gotta say, man, I know it's blood sport. I know it's like, out of a movie, I don't like the butcher's new gear. I I don't even remember what he what he dressed. I like. don't even know what you're talking about. He he has like the red sash on with like the oh, black kind of pants. Yeah, he looks like he's like running from the bulls in Pamplona and shit. Yeah, I I don't know, man. It, it's not quite not quite him for me. I I don't know. I just. Always felt like he was on fuck shit, so I I don't pay attention to how he's dressed. Uh, you gotta remember, he, like Richard Rashley loves the butcher. I know, so. I know he does. You know, you know, Big Bush, another main event here. You know, it just goes oh well God. when Big Bush is around. <laughs> you know, oh, um, yeah. So this was awesome, um, and they ended up. Uh, Marsley ended up using the paradigm shift after he no sold a fucking Urican, uh from Eddie Kingston, <laughs> yes. and he beat him. And then um, well, at the like end, Urican, that was just a spinning back fist, you know. Eddie, yeah, yeah. Look, look winners have Urikins. Not. <laughs> not <laughs> can we can we talk about it now? Uh, talk about what? With that, look, I don't know what Eddie Kingston got going on. I believe that he's literally in the back telling people, I want you, pin me. Like, I feel like he's back there telling Tony, pin me. No, not them, pin me. I'm the guy to take this to Falls. Like, bro, he's three and eight on pay per view in, in TV. On Dynamite and pay per view, he's three and eight. Like, and it feels like, you know, we talked about this, like, what his last win, I don't, his last win was against Archer, and that's because, like, Archer whooped his ass for, like, 90% of the match, and then the goons assembled and, and, and stole him one. It's like, can can can, can this man get, like, can, he can't be the Mick Carter? Can he be the Mick Carter? <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. It, 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 that's not for you, baby. I guess not. I guess not. Um, and, at the end, uh, we got Kenny that came out there with the Good Brothers. Good Brothers started beating on John Moxley's ass, holding him, and then Kenny Omega cuts this psychotic promo. Looks like he's fresh off a of line. Um, <laughs> and it, the promo is really good too, where he says he wants Moxley in an exploding barbed wire death match. And I'm like, I didn't know we did these in this country. And I was like. This is going to be crazy. They have a fucking stadium sitting right there. They can do it. I'm really into this. Um, I know the traditional match. I'm sorry. I'm taking this exploding barbed wire death match. Like I, it's never happened in America before. So like I'm I'm going with that. It, it has, just not on a major scale. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely some CZW motherfuckers have done this. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, what yeah, the I'm, fuck I, is this about to happen? I, I mean, I, I think Kenny's winning, but somebody, somebody might get out, or somebody might get gasoline poured on. For all we know, man. I mean, it's probably most likely going to be both of these guys are big time fans of the original traditional style um exploding barbed wire death match the ones that I'm sorry. uh did you say the original traditional style of exploding barbed wire death <laughs> match yeah you know, the great traditions of, of of exploding of blowing a bitch up yeah like there there used to be rules in decorum like when he said the, the murder match what no to an extent to an extent this is a real thing i'm not even okay. like joking with you that's wild so, 
So, I mean, you know, basically, like, a lot of deathmatch wrestling today has kind of devolved into just, like, you know, a bunch of stunts where people are just trying to, you know, out-tough one another and just blow, you know, hurt themselves and do stupid shit because they can't work. And for the most part, that's what a lot, a lot of what you see, especially in the American deathmatch indie scene. But, like, what Mox, as well as, like, Kenny are a fan of, they like what Onita used to do, which is extremely, like, logical and psycho psycholo- psychology based death matches and that's what the fmw matches were back in the day like they would tease the spots and build to them build to them build to them until finally boom you'd get a big you know blow up and then another one and then another one they'd build upon each other and it felt epic and almost cinematic in nature that's what this is probably going to be like. Um, and also, it's probably going to be relatively safe because most of the explosions were just pyro, you know, which isn't like, you know, safe, but it's not going to be like gasoline and fire and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, it's yeah. going to, it's going to, it's going to be probably pretty, uh, I, I don't know what the word is, but you know, tame. Not, not tame. It's, it's I'm, I'm sure they're going to be. Yeah, so more... they're gonna have big explosions, but like I don't think that they're gonna be at that much risk. Like I, I'm, I'm looking forward to. it. I think it's gonna be exciting, but this is probably gonna be their like love letter to FMW. Wow, man, they're they're giving us stuff I didn't even know I wanted. What now, exploding barbed wire? Like, after I've been talking about death matches all these months, this is like the result of it. I did kind of get into uh, a little bit of an argument with someone online. Um, I, I won't name any names. But, you know, to me, the only thing I have a problem with this at all is the logic of it doesn't 100% jive with me. Mm-hmm. I sort of get what, what um, Omega's Kenny whole thing. Rematch clause, yeah. Yeah, Kenny pretty much was just like, hey, uh, you're going to keep chasing me, so let's just settle it in the biggest way possible. I get that. But it felt like because Mox was chasing him, why would he pick – one of Mox's matches, why would he challenge Mox to, you know, an exploding barbed wire death match? It well, kind of came out of nowhere. Well, their first, their lights out match was Omega losing a Moxley match, and he's probably still, and remember, he, at that point in time, the bill was Moxley murders uh, Janela, and then Kenny wrestles Janela um, on dark in a lights out match to prove that he, he's actually made, cut out for that against Moxley, and then he ultimately fails. He's still caught up on trying to beat his man in his own game because he's a he's an asshole heel. I'd be fine with that, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I just don't feel like they've said that. That's true. Well, what they've, I think they've done. They've had um, they had that match a couple weeks ago, like the, that lights out, <clears throat> out match. I, it feels like a natural escalation point. I just don't think they've framed it in like flashing lights like hey <laughs> but it's like progressively gotten more like heated yeah like between- the, yeah like the violence has gotten to that point where it's like yeah you want to name some big bluff type of match involving death in the word like in the word of the match like fine by me um like i popped when i heard exploding because i was like they finna do an exploding uh bat death match my first thing was like this is tamism but what <laughs> Look, it's still it's still exploding death. So it's like whatever works for me. Uh, like me personally, I, I really would have. Um, I still like whenever you know. I don't know how long it takes to get to it. I still want a fucking regular rules match between them two. But you know, I guess for the next you know once a year for the next like four years, they're gonna be doing like crazy shit. Like they might do a fucking uh, scaffold match <laughs> eventually too between these idiots. But whatever. Um, I. I is there going to be a match that like I'm going to want to watch ever again after I watch it initially? Probably not. I've never watched it at um that that horrifying um full full not full a uh, full gear lights out match that they did like that the that it was it was it made me want to look away from the TV too often. So um this is probably another one of those. I watch it. I'll be like that was a great match. Never going to watch it again. But I'm into it for now. I want to know what their outfit is going to be like. Is my, John Moxley going to show up smoking like Onita? Who's wearing the black <laughs> jacket? Is it Kenny who's been wearing the Onita jacket for fucking like a month now? Um, I want to know the aesthetics of this. Is it going to happen in the stadium? Like, there's I so imagine, much like shit that like the Jack Stadium. Yeah. Well, I hope they do like the time bomb with it because 
uh, that's like one of the big FMW gimmicks was not just that like when you got thrown and shit it exploded, but that there was a timer and it would count down. And if mm-hmm. the match didn't end before the timer, it would explode on both of them, you know? And that was all, that was always like a big part of those big FMW matches. And like, I got a feeling they're going to do that. Yeah. Straight out of fire pro. Like, cause yeah. I've had a, I had tons of exploding bar wide death matches in, in fire pro. It's very fun. Um, I, yeah, man, what <laughs> this is, this is incredible. Like I, like, I didn't know, like, yeah. Like, what is Tony Khan? Yo, Tony Khan's on another fucking level. Doing this? Like, <laughs> like well, well, I, you, I don't know what to prepare for now with him. You shared that tweet. Someone uh, out there was like, you know, this man, like, bamboozled everyone into thinking, like, they were getting, like, all Japan and, like, strong style. When in reality, like, this man's been prepping to get, like, IWA and FMW off yes. the ground. Like, that's what he really is all about. You know? Like, like they did Mox and uh, Ken, they did a big Japan high budget deathmatch <laughs> last time, and now they're gonna go straight to FMW on you boys. Wow. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's AEW, man. Oh man, I'm gonna be qu- uh, real quick NXT because I-, I gotta tell you guys something. Um, there was one good ass match on NXT. Um, it was triple th- or a uh, trios match where it was um, Dunn and Lorkin and Birch versus O'Reilly and uh, Balor and Strong, and they had their wor- they were working their asses off, and then it was like, oh yeah, let's go home in like eleven minutes or the main event. I'm like, fuck. So and I look up, I'm like, why are seven matches on this damn card? And not and then like what I ended up doing was I ended up going to, um. The results page on cage match and adding up all of the match time, bell to bell, and rounding up for anything that goes over um, on on seconds. I'm like, why is this, you know, two hour show with the overrun, you know, so that's like 130 some minutes. Like, why did I only get like 45 minutes of wrestling? And this was fresh off of their takeover that ha- that had a positive reception. Yeah, they, they came out here and did a lot of talking. You're saying on this show. I mean, no, it's just like, you look up and you're like, how come none of these matches peak in the way that, like, NXT television used to? And obviously there's a lot to do with their, some of their changes as far as, like, adjusting to um, no audience or with a piss-poor audience when they have two dozen people there clapping while you have, you know, the Thunderdome, their mini Thunderdome around them. But it's like... This is a hour. This is a two hour. Sh- this two hour show with an overrun. Throwing the commercial breaks. It's like an hour and a half, hour thirty minutes of of TV time, and mm-hmm. I only got forty five minutes of wrestling. And then, I, and then I was like, "Huh, I wonder." Let me go back to before, like, like. So I went to you know February twentieth or whatever else of two thousand nineteen for end up on TV, right? Hmm. That's when it was an hour, no commercial breaks, right? Half the show was, or on a 60-minute show, 30 minutes was bell time. And I look at Dynamite from this week. It's, a you know, half the time was bell time. Look at, I, th- I looked at the last start, or the last uh, regular Shinkiba, uh or Road to a level show for, for Stardom. You know, those shows are normally like an hour and 40 minutes in time. Look at their bell time. Half the time is bell time. Or half the time is match time. So I'm like, when did this change? And like, what, you know, when did this change? And like, is this the reason why like the show or the, the matches aren't, don't peak like they used to? And like all this other stuff start questioning or whatever else. Like obviously small a- anecdotal Stuff or whatever else, but it's like it is is a film. It's like why are seven matches on a seven on a on a hour and a half long show or whatever else, and like nothing goes more than like fourteen minutes, you know. Um, but anyway, um, show starts out with O'Reilly coming out. He wants answers. Um, Roger comes out. He's furious. He says, "I don't." He starts cussing. They had to bleep him out uh, for him cussing at Roddy, saying, "I don't want you. I want Adam Cole. I want answers from Adam Cole." Um, so then Balor comes out. Balor's uh, pissed and says, "You want you if you want O'Reilly. If you want uh, Cole, you got to get in line behind me. I trust you. I don't trust 
uh, after Cole kicked me, I don't trust him, and I don't trust uh, Roddy either. So Roddy and um, and Kyle. Balor start. No, Roddy and Balor start arguing, and all of a sudden, out out comes. <laughs> Uh, done, done, and the rest of the blokes, and they, and they start fighting. They immediately threw uh, Roddy into the uh, into the barricade, and then they basically start like uh, using numbers game on just uh, Roddy, not Roddy, but uh, Balor and and um, Kyle. So then um, they end up cl- like lighting them up, and then uh, we end up getting an announcement that they're going to be in the main event in a uh, trios match. So. Then after that, we end up getting um, a rematch from the semifinal of the uh, Dusty, of the Women's Dusty Cup. We end up getting Ember and Shotzi versus uh, Candice and Indy. And this match was played for Johnny to go on commentary and put up like wanted posters or lost and found posters for Austin Theory. Where's Austin Theory? Just a commentary. <laughs> Where's Austin Theory? Um... The the match is played like as as just like a joke for trying to do funny commentary, which it was funny, but it was like, well, all right, well, we just got a nothing match, and so all of a sudden, <sighs> gotta go back, gotta go back, back when they did the Cameron Grimes and Dexter Loomis House of Horrors match, um, when he got kidnapped to the House of Horrors, um, there was a white windowless van. This white windowless van then showed up in the middle of the match, and they cut to it in the middle of fucking action. Not a rest hole, not from commercial break, or going to commercial break. In the middle of action, they cut uh, to the back of uh, the PC. See this car, this windowless van pull up. Obviously, you think, oh yeah, that's the van from the from the Hollow Scream shit that uh, Loomis did back in October. Uh-huh. Austin Theory is in there. Gargano gets up and leaves and goes out there. They go to come back commercial break. Johnny's out there looking around for Loomis, can't find them. They go back to the ring. Um, I don't. You can't keep track of the story because they're so worried about this fucking um, van. Uh, next thing you know, Johnny, while Indy is a legal person, Johnny shows up on the ramp with Austin Theory wearing different clothes than what he was wearing when he got kidnapped on Sunday, which means uh, your boy got changed, which is like violation. Major violation, uh, and he had a he had a uh, Austin Theory had a um, a sack over his head. Pulls off the sack and he was like, "It's me! You found me!" He, he had zip ties around his legs and his and his uh, wrist or his ankles and wrists. So as they pull off the after, as they reveal that Johnny has found Austin Theory, Candace runs off the from out of the fight or from the ring uh, area and runs up the ramp to join them and celebrate. Indy is in the ring, still a legal person, is smiling and happy that, that Austin is found. She eats a finisher and gets pinned. Uh, so it's like, so this match is nothing. This is a comedy gag for, um, for, for Johnny. It was funny, but it was like, all right, well, like I wanted, I wanted some no BS. <laughs> Um, so, you know what I'm saying? Like, That's for Loomis. Yes, thank you. Kidnapping a bitch. Yes. Uh, so then, we get Pat McAfee inside of a private plane, and he glows and talks about how, I told you Adam Cole was a piece of shit, y'all didn't want to believe me, I was right, and to celebrate my rightness, we will start the trend on Twitter, hashtag, Pat was right. And then talks about the IWC, and he said, "You guys would have understood this if you guys weren't idiots." But and I was ahead of y'all, but y'all would have got it. And while I'm sitting there, I'm watching. I was like, "Bro, Adam Cole has always not been shit. You were just a worse piece of shit for like a month or two, or for two uh, cycles. Like I never, I Adam Cole never turned babyface. He just was dealing with a worse asshole. Uh, so whatever. Um, so then." We end up getting uh, Kashida in the in the weight in the training room. Um, he is banged up, but he is but he is still clear to wrestle. So as he's talking to a trainer about that, 
in comes Bronson Reed and says that, look, man, I see you're banged up. You know, keep your head on the swivel. People are out here to take advantage of you. But I want to let you know that, like, you know, I know you're not done with Johnny, but I, too, am coming after the North American title. But, you know, respect. So they, they bump fists or whatever else. And and then all of a sudden, you see in the background, you see somebody reading a newspaper, sitting down in the background. All of a sudden, you see that newspaper close. And you see Michael Bivens with the biggest fucking smile on his face, like I don't hit a lick. He runs up, he says, Kashida, what you doing here, man? So he goes like, Hey, you know, you I saw you banged up for the magic great match, whatever else, but you know, my client Russ Cole, he's looking for some uh inter- for for a challenge. And you know, seeing that you're still medically cleared, I would I just want to see if you had the co- the fighting comp- uh, spirit tonight. So he, you know, he's trying to pick the pick the scraps up on the Kushida. So they end up getting Tyler Russ versus Kushida later on in the show. So then uh, you end up getting uh, Leon Ruff versus Swerve, and Swerve is playing this shit as a joke. Like, come on, this guy really? This guy on the, comment- the former champion, right? On commentary, they're pointing out that Leon Ruff is shouldn't be getting this shouldn't be dismissed like this because he is a former North American champion. Um, and Bad News Barrett points out like, but that's because he's been handed these opportunities out of nowhere. He did nothing to earn that title shot. He got picked on a fucking random wheel by Johnny, and he got it. Like, look at someone like Swerve or whatever else. Like, he got one opportunity ever, and then they close the door on him, and like, and that, and they're like, "Look how talented this dude is. This, this sucks." So, Mash continues. He gives, uh, he beats Leon Ruff's ass, like in between, giving him a couple hope spots, a, a spectacular hope spots, or whatever else. And then the end, um, Leon Ruff rolls up, swerve, swerve. Freaks, you know, well, he doesn't blow a stack, but like he does the I'm hot, but I'm trying to play it cool type thing. He gets up, shakes his hand, and then stomps a mud hole in, in Leon Ruff. Um, and then as he goes up the ramp, he, he says the same thing that was that kind of way Bear was echoing. It's like, You're a joke. You keep getting opportunities. Where's my opportunity? Or whatever else, as he's going back up the ramp. Um, it sounds like he's right. Because <laughs> he is. Um, opportunities, yeah, more opportunity, opportunity guy, WWE. Um, so then we end up getting Casey Canzaro versus in uh, Kane Carter versus uh, Aaliyah and Jessica Maya. This was super duper short. Basically, they beat the hell out of uh, uh, Ro- the Robert Stone brand, and then out comes Zia Lee with um, Boa. Casey walks up the ramp and says, hey, you know, last week was really weird with uh, the mystical, mystical person or whatever else, but... The dragon. Know, but... <laughs> uh, <laughs> when you say the dragon, I'm thinking of Alicia Dragon from Cisco. Alicia <laughs> Dragon. So, so, she's like, look, man, I know it's weird, but, you know, we go back and, you know, I trust you. I, I trust you, Zaya. So, like, just, just talk to me, like, you don't you well, how come you're not talking to this community is what the fuck's going on, which is like how, you know, when something weird and shit like this will happen, like that's how you actually talk to someone who knows like what the fuck's going Why on. Why don't she watch the show? So, she should watch the show. That, that she got brain she got abducted and brainwashed? Yeah, that that would help. Yeah. Um but anyway, so <laughs> then um so then Zaya so then she she reaches out to, to Zaya's hand and Zaya takes her hand and then like she puts the mark on her hand that like uh that like the, the homie Shea Fu put on uh put on Zai and Boa's hand before they got abducted, and she said next week it's me and you. I'm a and basically like you finna get your ass with by this brainwashed Zai that you still trying to call a friend. Uh, so that was that. So then we end up getting commercial. Then we come back commercial break. We end up getting um Beth Phoenix in the ring puts over the history of the Dusty Cup. Talks about the you know the women's uh, coming into part of history now, and brings out MSK. Um, they do this I'm trying to th- new day new day ish type of promo where they're like kind of like ah shucks, but like being fun and like interactive with like 
or trying to be interactive with these two dozen fans. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so then, and also with Beth, like they, they both hugged Beth or you know, whatever else. And then all of a sudden they bring out, um, Raquel and, and Dakota and, um, Raquel and Dakota talk about, start being more proud about them being the first, uh, Dusty Cup, uh, women's winners. And then all of a sudden out, you hear Shannon Baylor's music hit and I'm like, no, they brought Nia to fucking full sail. They come down, the crowd, the two dozen chant for, for Shayna. They don't say sh- boo or sh- shit for, for Nia. <laughs> like, just like I expected. So, um, face to face looking at the camera or in, in the ring, you see, um, uh, Nia and, um, Raquel are face to face. And then you see, uh, Dakota and Shayna face to face. And, Shannon's like, Dakota, like, how you doing? Since I used to beat the shit out of you every single time you see like that sort that's sort of face. So then Dakota's like, Let me re- let me introduce you to these two, uh, Raquel. You're kinda new here. This is Nia Jax. And this is the person that left after Ra- after Rhea whooped her ass. So then Raquel's like, Oh, she whooped your ass? Well, check this out. I whooped Raquel, I, I wrote Rhea's ass. So what do you think I'll do to you? So then Naya hops in and says, you know, um, I do, re-, she says like, you know, as someone, you did just win this Dusty Cup and I was actually here when Dusty was around NXT and she, and he used to say to me, you know, baby, you were the, you were the biggest, most dangerous bitch in the game. Something along the lines of that with a Dusty accent. And, um, Raquel was like, look, I didn't know Dusty, but things have changed. Basically, I'll whoop your ass. So, um, they so talked about her whole. Yes, I'm getting to that. So then she made some reference to, uh, as a dismount. Also, while they're doing all this tense stuff and talking, you know, making all the jokes about like Rhea and whatever else, in the background in the corner, all of a sudden out of nowhere, they cut to the corner and you see Beth. And both members of MSK with buckets of popcorn, eating the popcorn as they talk shit to each other. Doing New day type shit is what I mean. So, all of a sudden, once Raquel says the line about her whole... Uh, <laughs> Wesley like basically like goes into a coma and drops the, the bucket of popcorn and falls to the ground and basically like planks. And, and, and they're like, oh, whatever else. I'm just like... I, like Man. it was like it was a bad line. But it's like, is it? They were they yeah. they were they gonna run it to the ground? I don't even know about running into the ground. Of the thing because it, it had just happened, but it was like I don't I, I don't want Raquel talking about people's holes. I don't want Raquel killing motherfuckers. You know, it was one of those things. Like I, I don't. Given what we see in the character, that's not something she would normally say, right? But whatever. That's just a me thing, I guess. Um. So, then we end up getting the camera guys video package, the same one that we saw on TakeOver. I, I, I delighted watching this thing. Like, I, I don't know why I like this, this video, or like this song and video so much, but it's, you know, stacking money. 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 Stacking money. I'm gonna stack it up to the moon. Um, so then we end up getting Kushida versus Tyler Rust. Good ass match. Um, just short, <laughs> just short. They, um, you know, typical, like, I don't know if you ever seen Tyler Russell Russ before, but like, it, it's kind of like, if you think of Pac, if Pac didn't know flying. I, I, I'll tell you right now. And not I've, as good, obviously. I, I actually think Tyler Russ is one of the like best, uh, like Matt wrestlers I've ever seen. He is a just great the, wrestler. Yeah. Uh, I think he's going to be one of your tough white men. In NXT, oh, for he sure. is. He's just on lower level because he he does jobs. Yeah, he's yeah. already in it. He's already in the the, in it, in the NXT Never Division. He already is. Yeah. yeah, the first the first time I saw him in in New Japan, I was like, "Holy shit, who is this guy? Why has nobody signed him?" And then he got signed like you know almost immediately. Yeah, um, it's basic, amazing. Basic story: the match is uh, Russ gets advantage at at the beginning because obviously she's still beat up from Sunday's match. He overcomes it. Um, and then ultimately he ends up getting his arm and working over his arm. And there's been there were, like 
as he was progressively working over Russ's arm, like Russ is getting some great counters in and, and getting back at him. But ultimately at the end, Kashida ends up slapping on the uh, the hoverboard lock, and Russ wants to fight through it and try to make the ropes, but um, Bivens gets up and immediately uh, throw. He didn't throw in a towel, but he calls the fight off on his behalf, and it was very similar to the same logic that um, Brian Cage when Mo- that Brian Cage and Moxley match was like, "I'm protecting you from yourself. Um, you might not like it now, but you'll appreciate it in the long run." That sort of thing, um, and, and it. Like their relationship harkens back to me. Like there's a lot of like Selena Vegas and Selena Vega and um, Andrade. It's just like I don't think that he'll ever scale up to that level. Um, because obviously like he's talking for him because he's missing charisma. Uh, but like he can wrestle his ass off. Like the match he the match he's had like the first match with, with the Chomp was, was was good as hell too. Just like got to get him some wins, got to get him, you know, in in the mix. And it's like, you know, with them, you know, getting them in the mix is like, you got to be around for a year and then they'll do something with you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then you end up getting um, Zoe Stark in, in this uh, squash match. Zoe Stark is, might be my new favorite toy in NXT. Um, this is the first match. She came in, she squashed this woman. She kicked the shit out of her with, with, with strikes and, and knees and, and all types of kicks and forearms and, and running and, and rope running and whatever else. Like it, it was, it was very, very fun. She sold a little bit, but like mostly just beat the shit out of her. Um, she's like five foot eight. So, um, from what I hear, they're all in on her. Look, I, I don't know what, I don't know about her talking or whatever else. And also like another thing that I looked at her, her cage match, like, she doesn't have much experience in the ring, but she's been around for a long time. Like her first match from like 2014, and then like she had like a num like maybe like a dozen matches, stopped, got back into wrestling like 2018, and then like had like 30 matches last year, and like has been wrestling since then and got signed here. But like, given you know she looks you know she's she looks almost like a like a like a fitness model build. Almost like has the, the the tan and all that, but like she all but she's just throwing strikes like a fighter or whatever else. Mm. Like she like somebody like uh, she wrestles like somebody you imagine be like they will pair with like Sonya Deville almost. Um, mm. Yeah, so but I, she's off a good start. She impressive squash, impressive squash. So um, then you get uh, carrying cross. Um, gives um, Santos Escobar an uh, ultimatum. Like earlier in the show, um, Regal had told us that, like, you know, the match that was announced between Santos Escobar and Cross for this show got moved back one week because of this. And then they show a video of Escobar, like, getting in his car and saying, like, I operate on my time. I'm. He gets. He, he literally gets out of his car, stands up, points it to the uh, shows the uh, PC in the backdrop. He's like, I'm leaving. He just drove the fuck off. Like he ran from a match. So, like Rigo told him, the match will be next week. And if you don't show up next week, I'm stripping you of the of the of the uh, cruiserweight title. So, um, flash why? <laughs> Huh? Like, would you go give it a cross? Like, no, nah, it was like, hey, I, I ordered, or I, I am the you usurp my power as the GM because you're trying to be cute or whatever else, you're trying to play my games, or whatever else, or, or whatever. I don't appreciate this shit. I made a match. I just basically had to, you know, bilk it because of, uh, because of you. So you'd run from this match again. I'm stripping you of your title. So, um, Cross says, there's basically like, you know. You playing games? There's nowhere to run. Come next week, I'm whoop your ass. That's more or less what he said. So, obviously, he put it up in more. He did it with tarot cards and shit with, with Scarlet or whatever else. But that's the gist of it. Uh, whatever. God damn it! Yes, t- <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. I won't get. I won't, like, I'm, I'm summarizing to make for to make time. But like, don't forget, I'm the one, But he didn't say it like a normal person. He was like, nah, he's still on this dark shit. So, um, then we end up getting to um, the main event. Uh, the trios match between uh, Dunn, Lorcan, and Birch, and Roddy, and uh, Balor, and, and O'Reilly. Excellent match. Like, quick tags in and out on both sides. Getting their shit in, getting it out. Like, mat wrestling, ground wrestling, striking. Like, it, it was like they it was like a 13-minute match, whatever else, and they fit like 
15, no, not 15, more like 16 minutes worth of shit in it. It's almost like they got their time kind of like, we ain't changing shit. We're still doing our match. So, um, matches, matches was great. And then all of a sudden, um, Adam Cole comes out. Um, he, he helps lay out Balor with the ref's back is turned. He lays out O'Reilly by, um, clearing off the top half of the still steps and then giving that man a brain buster on the bottom half of the steps. Um, in, oh, in, um, Adam Cole, like he fucked up his back while doing it, by the way. Like, while he, he took it, the bump. Yeah, basically. <laughs> you saw it, right? Yeah. Yeah, like, it, it, he basically lands on his back on the edge of the thing. Like, dude, like, I don't know what it is with you and, and Damian Priest when it comes to the bottom <laughs> half of these things. Leave that alone. Um, and then, uh, uh, so then basically uh, Balor's in there by himself fighting after that's all been cleared out and then Dunn um, ends up getting a, a pin on um, Balor so I'm assuming he's getting another rematch It'll be, he'll get two losses the same way that uh, O'Reilly got two losses um, but yeah uh, they'll probably do that March 3rd if yep. I had to take a guess yeah oh yeah also so while they were so another part about that uh, about March 3rd while they were building up um, the Dusty Cup matches between MSK and Lorcan and Birch and um, Shayna and Nia versus Raquel and Dakota. Both of those matches uh, were were advertised for March 3rd. Um, another thing is like, over. The, I haven't mentioned this in the last couple weeks, but like, over the last couple weeks or whatever else, like, they've been announcing all of, they've been announcing multiple matches a week ahead and two weeks ahead. Like, they're actually telling you what the fuck's gonna happen on these shows at a time <laughs> so I appreciate that um but yeah I'm nice March 3rd, but March 3rd is a thing and it's like gee I wonder why is that is it because that's the go home show for revolution ding 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 that's the reason why um yep. but yeah like should be a good ass show um either way for March 3rd or whatever else but yeah are they about to put the belt back on Adam Cole god I hope not yeah. Not, well, I don't uh, want to say it like that, like, but like he was a champion for a fucking year, almost. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. I underst- like especially when it's like, all right, you were planning on putting the shit on Cross. Cross got hurt immediately, and it's like Cross is right back. So now you want to do this thing without him calling? And it's like, and he's a heel. It's like, all right, we have a tweener as the champion. The two num- the two guys that most lurking as they looks like they're next in line to possibly be champion. Be like, you're going back to Adam Cole after you just got off off of him. It was as a heel again, and then Cross still a heel. Like if you want to turn Cross face, fine, but more heel stuff. Like come on, come on. Um, but yeah, that was that was NXT. Uh, it was a fine show. I was sound, like, Man, I want some shit to peak. It, do, it it do, it doesn't that sound like sound they took like advantage. A fine show. Yeah, the wrestling was the the thing is the wrestling was fine. I'm skimming through this because we just spent like an hour and a half talking about AEW. So like I'm trying to get past because we got to get started. Yeah. Um. You would think they would have came out hotter off of their hot show, but I don't know. You know, they're not good with, they historically are not good with, especially going, now that they're on TV on Wednesdays, they're not, yeah. they're, 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 I think only like one or once or twice they've ever been good, like hitting the ground running right after, um, on the show right after. So, like, that's, that's just a, a function of them still being on the, or at Trini, she, she shit's like, they're on the network. I think I remember seeing on my timeline, it was like, like people were talking about the lack of wrestling through like the first X amount of minutes of the show and stuff like that. And it was like, all right, well, man, hold on. I'll, I'll go, with, I'll go through these matches again, bro. Like seven matches. Um, I'll go through it again. Um, bear with me as I pull up this, um, NXT, uh, thing. Yeah, man, it was, events, Scroll down. Keep going. Keep going. Like for example, the NXT that, I'm t- that we were just talking about, like it got a seven, it got a seven point one on uh, on uh, cage match, right? So, right, thirteen minutes for the for the Indy Hartwell and uh, Shotzi match that was played up for Gargano, right? Five God, minutes and thirteen five, minutes. Five and a half. It was a good match. It was a decent match. I won't say a good match. It wasn't as good as the first match. But anyway, um, Isaiah Scott in, in Swerve it was five five and a half minutes. Uh, the squash match for Caden Carter against uh, the in um, in Casey Gonzalez goes two and a half minutes. Kashida and Tyler Russ goes eight minutes. 
the Zoe uh, the Zoe Stark match goes uh, two and a half minutes. Uh, the six the trios match out that I thought was great uh, end up going twelve minutes. Like that's you know what I'm saying? Like what, what was supposed to be able to peak aside from the main event? The main event even chance to peak only with twelve fucking minutes with six dudes that are all great wrestlers. Mm-hmm. Like that's a that's why I started this thing off talking about going through NXT. It's like why the fuck is forty five minutes of rep a bell action on an hour and a half long show? Hmm. Well, um, Josh. Yeah, thanks for joining us, Josh. Unless you want to stick around for stardom and just be like, oh, yeah. So uh, you want you? I think it's yeah. an appropriate time to drop you off right here. So yeah, this is you, this is this is not really my lane. So I'm gonna let you guys have at it. Yes, thank Get you. Your thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Uh, you guys can catch my show, Keeping a Strong Style. We record every Tuesday night. We drop every Wednesday morning. Um, follow us on Twitter. We're at ki strong style. You know, you can chat with us on the Discord and in, on the Reddit, but the main thing is just follow us on Twitter, and uh, you know that's where you can catch us every week. Thanks, man. So hell yeah, appreciate you coming on, man. All right, see you but guys. Without further ado, James, hit the music. <laughs> Okay, so um, we are going to be talking about the uh, Valentine's weekend Cork and Hall shows from the 13th and the 14th. Um, a lot of good-ass wrestling on both of these shows. I don't know which one, which show I liked more. Probably the second one, which is saying something considering, like, you know, the, the, the big SWA match, the big white belt match on the first show. But, like, I like the depth of the second show more um uh i'm trying to think so which matches did you see rich so i saw the first two i saw the sherry and azumi match and then i saw the julia and the kid uh match i was kind of in and out of that one so i probably need to like watch that again okay. like to get like a closer view on it but i, I saw enough okay but um, sherry and azumi man just right out the gate like just the, just rolling around like i think I think in the, the the great Azumi Starlight Kid, you know, uh, you know the great war uh-huh. between them. I guess I think I'm gonna be riding with with the Team Azumi. Like, you know, it's very similar to when people talk about uh, LeBron or Kobe. And I'm like, I like both of them. I like one more, but I like both of them. So I'm not gonna be on one side or the other. Uh, but yeah, I I like Azumi more because I. Zumi just a just a a better athlete and more fluid, and she does she does stuff that I think oh, that, no. yeah she and she also does stuff that is like and gets to spur, certain spots on the floor that's like that is stuff that that's kind of like outside the box type of thinking for her matches whatever else and like I think that I think there are uh, I think there are things that are important that start like his better at than Azumi like. She's more like naturally charismatic in a traditional way for wrestling. Um, she's also a she's also just a a, a better overall babyface, and I think her matches are more conventionally tight as far as sto- from a narrative for storytelling. But like just a flat out work, like Nah, Zumi's got her. Um, but the thing is, like Starlight Kid was so good in the end of last year, like from the Grand Prix to you know being in the tag league with with, with Mayu, that is like, you know, that's the reason why she ended up getting nominated for the um for on our awards for you know wrestler of the year. Um, like she was the eighth person, like she she had to come up, like she's you know being put in bigger spots. She's like succeeding, so I'm happy for both of them. And like you know, this is what you want to see elevation of the younger people, like for the future. And this is like the year where it's like it's really here now between these two. Like this was like the one where it's like we we're gonna look back and be like, remember when they first fought? Finally got for real deal singles title matches. Like you know when they're you know white belt and red belt champions in years from now. But like this is like we'll be, yeah. we'll be looking back on like this is the start of it. Like they both knocked right. out the park. Um, and it's funny. It was like both of them like. It's like they're sophomores in high school. They both had to fight like college seniors or whatever. <laughs> yes, exactly. 
<laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, like as far as the um the SBA match with Azumi is like a lot of sticking and moving at first, trying to keep um a uh, Shuri rolling. back foot, Why? and then like when when Shuri, but when Shuri was get was, got a hold of her, she, she really let go. Um, but yeah, like uh, at the end of it, like uh, you know, Azumi uh, Azumi uh, they had none left, and like she just Shuri just. <laughs> Azumi's getting up basically like to a knee and then like Azumi just or sorry Shuri just reaches back and just buzzsaw kicks her fucking head off and it was unprotected shot it was yeah. just gross um yeah uh I end up giving that f- uh like I, I was somewhere between four and four and a quarter I I, I love the match um, yeah I think I would probably say four yeah so um I'm trying to figure out where no wrong call. Julia and then Starlight Kid yeah, we'll for get the to white that. belt. Yeah, we'll get to that. Man. Yeah. <laughs> so this match started out with super this this match started out where like Starlight Kid learned no from the jump. Like we will we will strong style brawl in this bitch when we have to. She hits her with these they start trading these big or actually not trading, but like she started hitting her with these big uh elbows to the chest or whatever else and Julia's um you know eating them and whatever else but like these things are thudding off whatever else and she's starting to sell in a way that like she wasn't selling for someone like um Unagi like a week ago or, or whatever else um so that you know so she was also talking back um there was a night I think uh a oh, big yeah, she, part, she part of the out. match before actually the match started like the stare down and you can see uh how they shot it and Julia's just fucking towering over her and like yeah. built like a fucking god, like just like standing over her. And I thought that was like a very important thing to pay attention to. Yeah. Um, so then, you know, at, you know, surely, obviously, Julia gets the advantage. Um, and then she starts hitting home Which spots like Cog Diesel. <laughs> she's up getting a whole spot like uh there's one big whole spot where they end up out on the floor and um kid ends up getting her uh, getting control of the match getting getting uh julie on the apron and um in matches like at the end of last year like starlight kids started getting people basically like um by the ropes like in between the the middle and top rope like uh out inside facing out on towards the apron and she would hit people with like these drop off DDTs where she you know gets you in the front face lock and basically drops to the apron and basically spike mm-hmm. you on the apron. Well what she decided to do with, with Julia was get you on the apron and then basically just drop, drop you on the fuck your head on the floor. Um so that that was that, so that was a you know a, a, a big a big key spot. Um there was also a at one point I remember seeing that they were both on the top rope and um, with Julia basically seated on the top rope, uh, facing into the ring, and uh, Starlight Kid was about to like look like she was gonna hit a a, a, a um you know top rope on it. I think she actually did hit one in this match, but later on in the match she actually did hit one of those um she had a quebrada like you know basically like you know wheelbarrow and then basically roll you down and it, I thought it was cool or whatever else there was a lot of stuff she threw, threw in there she also got to a point where it got Julia vulnerable enough to where like she's gonna hit her her own um, tiger suplex variation but Julia got to the ropes and fought to the ropes and got, avoided it but um yeah Julia ended up hitting her with uh one of her glorious drivers and hit her with another one and ultimately finished her um and while that, yeah. and during the case of the match match got heated enough to where like Julia started tearing at the mask um, at, at Starlight Kid's mask, beautiful looking mask, by the way. Like her gear was raw, so start tearing at the mask through the eye hole, whatever else. Starts thinking of like Desperado, um, Hiromu vibes. Um, and then after she wins, like she does, she continues beating up on Starlight Kid and like gets a, gets a pair of scissors. Um, some people in Don Mano are like fending off like people in stars Let's out on the ringside, <laughs> and then like she starts cutting. You know, through that that ripped eye socket, open it up more so you can actually see like you know, so like his forehead or whatever else. And then like she actually cuts like the 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 chin strap part off and rips it off. And then like the the ref is you know bells ringing. Ref like grabs a a, a jacket and throws it over Starlight Kid's head and everything. And um, 
you know, it, and it got, it got, like, she just went beyond the pillows, like, oh, what, what is this? Like, what, this, this is on call for. This is yeah. a regular tire match. This was, this was supposed to be an exhibition. <laughs> yeah. Julia, um, um, there was a part that she had her in the uh, guillotine where she was, uh, hanging from the corner and all yes. you can see is Julia's fucking arms, like, just like, <laughs> like just, just fucking, like, contracting, like, like, God, like, this woman's built like a god. Like, um, also Julia, honorary buck tassels. <laughs> you know, you can team her right up. Also, yeah. So, um, yeah, but like this match, I like the Izumi match more. But I think, given the how much hotter the crowd was, and given um, some of the things they did in this match, uh, in the more in the, the longer length of time, like most people are, I see a lot of people giving it four and a half. Um, I'm at four and a quarter on it flat, um, but I can see why people give it four and a half. Like, I, I, you know, so but I'd have to rewatch it, yeah. but it felt more visceral than the other one. The other one yeah. was like your better like wrestling match, right. like smoother, just better spots, and like. Sure, he's so fucking cool and like, right. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So, um, oh, also, I, this, let's backtrack. After, uh, after Shuri puts down a zoomy, she says, um, you know, like, I'm, I already can't wait to wrestle the wrestler that Azumi is going to become. Um, mm-hmm. but in the meantime, in between time, like, we're at, we're, you know, the Budokan Hall show is upon us, and I would like to, um, I would like to call, I would like to declare for my, my next challenger. So she calls mm-hmm. out Konami. Um, so as that happens, um, at my residence, uh, two fists go in the air like the Rocky, like, like, like Rocky on top of, of, of the Philly City Hall. I'm fucking ecstatic. Um, so, comes out and says, you know, we have our history or whatever else, because uh, in, in, you know, um, Shuri is a mentor figure for Konami, um, so, you know, she says, you know, I'm gonna take the belt off you, the end, and, um, and that was a match, I was happy like, to see that, like, they had one match before, it was, uh, the first round of, no, second round of Cinderella tournament last year, um, when, like, five minutes, it was excellent, uh, cause it's like a mirror match, it's two submission strikers. Um, so, but to go to, but getting back to after the white belt match, uh, with Julia, Julia, I forgot what she says, but she points out, but you can see like Mayu is, um, instead of getting in the ring to try to, you know, help, um, start like kid, like she's arguing with the ref because obviously it's not time for her to shoot an angle or whatever else. Um, Tam is there, but Tam normally sits like, in a, she sits out, I want to say in the crowd, but like sits in a section like by the crowd during like, um, during like main event matches, or whatever else. So, um, Julie gets on the mic and points out like, you know, I just took this mask and you know at Cork and Hall or not Cork at Budokan Hall, like I'm gonna I'm gonna have your blonde hair or whatever else. Uh, and then you know did the sign off, you know Donald Mono. That was the first night. Um, Don Don Mondo Goon Squad. Yeah. So, oh, hold on. I'm trying to think, is there anything else I need to point out from this particular card? Oh, um, yes. My trip in there was Rin Katakura on this show. Yes, she was. She was okay. tagging with Mayu. That's actually what I was going to get to a point I forgot. Um, yeah, she was. Um, she was tagging with uh with Mayu against um Tam and Unagi. Um. There was a bit, bit of business after this match. Match is all right. Like it was, it, it was good, but it, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, so ultimately, they end up pinning, or uh, I think Rin, either Rin or my end up pinning um, Unagi. Um, so then after the match, um, also pre match. Rin is there next to Mayu. Rin has the Mayu uh, logo like hoodie on with Mayu's face on the front logo and on the back has like the, the Phoenix bird or whatever else. Mm-hmm. Um, so after the match, you come to find out that like she's in marvelous, um, or whatever else, but 
turns out the the person they inspired her to get into wrestling was Mayu. Or whatever else. Why she ended up in Marvel instead of stardom, who knows, don't know, whatever else, but the person they inspired her to, to inspire her to wrestle was Mayu. So um, about to turn on Mayu up, real good. Up on the bout <laughs> up on the balcony um is Takumi and Shigusa Nagayo. Um and after the match, um, you know, like they ran in Mayu hug and um Ring gets on the mic and says, Mayu can I? Pl-? She's like, can I please go to Budokan Hall in the in the in the Battle Royal? And and Mayu was like, uh, this is almost like that's about my prayer chief. She's like, but she she ends up Mayu ends up saying, um, well, I well I got a question. Looks up and looks up at the balcony and is like, Chagusa, will you be in the will you will you be in the Stardom Rumble at, at Budokan Hall? Obviously, you know Chagusa, you know maybe the most famous Japanese woman wrestler of all time, crush one and a half of the Crush Girls from the eighties. Um, she's like, I know, and then like she's like, well, so then like they're, they're doing hand signs or whatever else from the balcony, and then like Chagusa's like, hold on, I'll come down. She comes down. They buy time for her to come down. She walks in. She says, well, you know, I've been retired for a few years, but. If it if it does get ran in, nah, I take I, I, t- I, t- I take a little check. You know? Right, like if it does get ran into the battle royal, and I and it's her dream, then I'll then I'll do it or whatever else. So you get ran in, and you also get um uh, you also get uh Chigusa and a guy in, which is like very important to get a crush gal on a shit to draw like. Any big show you do, you got to go get either Linus Oscar or Chagusa to help that shit draw. That's been the case for like the last thirty years of professional wrestling in Shoshi. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, I remember, you know, she's, well, you know, she also had got she also used person that ran Gaia before, you know, um, like the very end of like Joshi drawing big. So, um, trying to think what else. Oh, also on this card, it was a, uh, it was um. B versus Tall Saya. Very good match. I gave it four and a half. Not four and a half. My God. Three and a half. <laughs> so it's, a big, it's a big fucking difference. <laughs> oh, they had a classic? No. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> no. Uh, no, they had a, uh, they had a three and a half star match. It was interesting. It was actually like Gilgenson like started out rough, like big, or not sorry. Tall Saya, she airballed a, 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 a pump kick. B was stationary. She pumped. She also airballed a drop kick while uh, B was against the ropes. But ultimately, ended up getting good. She's like she's doing. She's her flying has improved. Um, she's also doing more flying stuff. But yeah, uh, ultimately ends up going to a fifteen minute draw, um, which is important for for um, tall side because B historically has been the brakes off of her, um, like pin her a million times. Like she used to do this like devastating like spinning DDT thing to her a million times where it's just like she sells it like she's fucking dead I've seen her do a million times for, for, for pinfall so like she went 15 minutes with B um, B also after the after Budokan Hall like most likely is the number one contender for uh, challenger for the red belt with Utami she pinned her in a um, not pinned her but she threw her out um a couple weeks ago in a elimination match. Um, and she's been talking shit to Tommy. Um, in the meantime, between them, she's been buying her time. So, uh, mm-hmm. so basically had to, the two next cont- red belt challengers had to go to a draw here. It makes sense for me. So, uh, that was all for the first show. Um, the, or the Saturday show, the Sunday show. Who boy. Um, they had a match, uh, that was, Giant Saya, Starlight Kid versus Azumi and Mei Hoshizuki. Mei Hoshizuki is basically the high speed uh uh mass not master, the high speed person in Marvelous. Uh, mm. she she was with Rin and Takumi when they wrestled uh Azumi Momo and Utami back in like October. And and she pinned Azumi to get a high speed belt match on one of the on the, I think it was the Osaka show the Osaka big show um, that I, I think I gave it four flat stars like 
she she's not as good as Azumi because she doesn't do as many crazy things as Azumi, but like as far as like smoothness and being able to run in the ring and quickness, quick twitch and all that kind of stuff, she's she's about equal. So like, uh-huh. yeah, so it's it's Azumi versus another uh, with another Azumi versus Starlight Kid in Big Side. This match was fantastic. Um you know, Starlight Kid in there with May. It was like, you know, it was like another version of seeing Azumi versus Starlight Kid. Um, it was great. All types of flip stuff. You you love the shit out of this match, Rich. Um, mm. but yeah, uh, I, ended up, I think I gave it three and three quarters. Um, I'm looking at Cage Match right now. It has a 7.4 on nine votes. So average rating for that is, yep, three and three quarters. Yeah. So anyway, um, I, I would say check that out. It's only 11 minutes. But um, underneath that was Mayu versus Unagi as Unagi goes through. I think, I think this was her third match in her seven trial series. Mm-hmm. <sighs> um, this match is like three flat or three and a quarter. And the whole match consists of Mayu just beating the ever loving shit out of Sayaka. Dis- disrespect kicks left and right. Um, just, <laughs> just basically gumming up anything she tries. Uh, she's uh, U- U- Unagi's fighting from her knees half the match as Mayu's just kicking her in the face and in her ribs and on her back and you know all types of stuff gives her a tombstone um just 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 destroyed her just destroyed her um but then uh the uh sorry the main event of this, of this car was a four way match um it was the two mem- the the Budokan white belt um, members or the two people in that match Tam and Julia and then the red belt um, for the Budokan Utami and, and Saya and or Tall Saya and it was interesting what they did like it was a four way match but they basically treated it like it was a tornado tag mm-hmm. except like not that people were teamed together it was that we were paired together it was like Tam and Julia were in the match, and they mostly only give a fuck with beating Tam and Julia up, and then Saya and Utami were in the match, and they were only really most concerned with beating up Tam, or sorry, beating up uh, uh, Una, Utami and uh, Tall Saya. Like, there were, obviously there were moments where they got in the ring and they, you know, did a couple spots or whatever else, like, there's a moment where, because, you know, um, Tam, not Tam, uh, when Tommy and Big Side were a tag team, so they did some spots on Tam. But ultimately, like it means like I'm, I'm not concerned about y'all two. I'm not concerned about y'all two. I'm here to bust the head of my opponent at Budokan Hall. And it was excellent. Show me my opponent. Yes. Uh, so it was excellent. Like uh, I ended up giving the four flat stars. The finish came on. Um, it basically broke into a four way, which it was. Where it was big move. Ne- next person gets in big move. Next person gets in big move. Um, Julie or Tam had Julia uh, dead to rights to pin. Utami comes in and lays out Tam, and then um, Saida had got laid out on the floor. Comes in, has a springboard her Karana for the win, and pins Utami, which she desperately needed that because as we talked about it on the show uh, on last you know last week or two weeks ago, it's like there's no reason to buy this. So you got to give her everything. So you got to give her, mm-hmm. you have, she has, she can't lose for two months. Like she can't, or she can't so lose. You, from, she can't lose from the start of this year. She can't, you know, she, uh, and she has to pin the champion. So that was Tommy's first, uh, like pinfall loss since she's won the belt. So you saying they built her up way better than they built the Miz up. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, so, um, so that was the undercard. The main event of this card was the tag title match between, um, B and Konami versus Hameka and Micah. Um, the storyline for that was that, um, Hameka had a title shot with Natsupoi. Natsupoi got pinned. She said, fuck that. You ain't pinned me. Run it back and I'll pick a better DDM member. That's basically the storyline. Yes, run it back. Yeah, so, uh. I, this is one of this is one of the better like uh, um this is one of the better like tag matches for or tag title matches in stardom in the last like year or so like ever since like the pandemic or whatever else like um the match is basically B starting out as B and 
Konami working over Micah's arm. Micah selling is, this is the best I've ever seen Micah sell. Like she saw, like she was legit hurt. They work over her left arm over and over and over. Just Konami's having a field day. B's having a field day. Um, it sets up a hot tag for, for Himeka. Himeka gets in and, um, she runs wild for a while. She ends up doing the, her, uh, double rack spot where she gets two people up in the, in the, in the corner, lifts them up and double racks them. Like she let, mm-hmm. Luger, like she lets Luger. Um, then they keep, and then like, aver- eventually like, uh, the heels end up getting the advantage again and then like, Hameka is working from underneath and she's in there forever. She just can't tag out. She's in there forever and ever and ever. Then she, she basically starts up her, starts up her own comeback. And then like, she has the match one. She hits the, her JP coaster is basically like a, um, have you in the rack. It's basically like a rack. AA is basically, except it doesn't come through the side. It comes over the front and it's a sit out deal. So she calls it the JP coaster. So she ends up hitting her move she goes for the pin. Kimai Oredo tie is around the ringside, but they haven't cheated at all. Like they've gone like f- probably at 15 minutes, no cheating at all. One, two, she's dead to rights. Three's about to come down. Man, Konami grabbed that fucking ref and yanked his ass out to the floor. Now this is like the, f- this is like the first time I ever liked that spot ever. It was because it was like, it wasn't like they done cheat. They've cheated a million times in this match. Just rushing, throwing their asses out and then something happens. It was like, They've been sitting there, they've been chilling. They had, and then all of a sudden, like the person that was actually in the match did pull, yank the ref out, get in the ring, start using weapons or whatever else. The rest of Don Mondo clear out the rest of the uh, Oedo tie. Get ref gets back up. B and um, Hameka go back and forth. B B hits her with big move after big move after big move. She kicks like out of two or three different things. Eventually, she escapes. Uh, ends up hitting the JP coaster again against the win. She's in tears. She's so happy. That's the first time she ever won a belt in stardom. It's, you know, she's been around since June of, uh, of last year. Um, her and Mike are the tag team champions. I don't know who the fuck finna beat them to. Cause that they ain't nothing but ruffians. Um, but yeah. <laughs> um, so they win. I, I think in the match, uh, four flat stars. Yeah, I gave the match four flat stars. Um, so they're super happy. B and Konami walk off. No Konami, knowing that Konami already has her match, her title match at Budokan Hall. So I was happy for them. And then the record screeches and Nasco Tor picks up the mic and says, Hey, I think, I think the way you handled this shit is all half ass. You lose, you get a new tag partner. That's bullshit. When I cheat and get intentionally disqualified, we're about to lose. Saki doesn't throw me away because I cheated because and and, and put add a loss to her record. The crowd claps like, "Yeah, you are a good friend, Saki. You have stuck around this piece of shit." So she says, "You know what? I I I want a title shot because you were asked. You got." You know, you got title shots you deserve. I want a title shot at Budokan Hall. So, t- Micah and, um, and Hameka will defend the goddess titles against, um, Saki and Nasco. Hopefully Nasco's not on that fuck shit on this, on this card. Whatever else. Like, so, whatever. Like, that's the match. Um, whatever. Like, I, I wish it had been a- another team, but whatever. Um, that's the card. So, do you want to go over? Do you want to go over the uh, the Budokan Hall card because all all eight matches are already up now? Or announced. when when is it? When is it? It is on March third, a Wednesday. Man, March third, something about that day, huh? Hey, they had their shit announced like back in New Year's, <laughs> actually November, I think, or whatever. So whatever. Um, Man. And also, look, they had the date originally never moved. AEW move the date. <laughs> uh, or actually, no, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of Revolution, not not a uh, dynamite. My bad. But yeah, so um, card order. The first match is the high speed match between Azumi and Asapoy. That match is gonna be a banger. Um, Should be great. Yep. Number two match. Um, I think it's I think they're calling the first two matches. They're dark. They're they're considered dark matches, but they're not calling them dark matches. Call them like prelude matches or prologue matches like it's a pre- whatever whatever Rossi they're, they're dark matches so 
Um, there will be they will be aired. You will see them, but they're, they're considered like the top six matches, different from the bottom two. Yeah, so, I, I think I want to watch this whole show. Oh my god, this card! This is gonna be short. This is gonna be short year contender. Like I don't think there's gonna be ten shows better than this or even eight. Um, but anyway, in the world this year. So unless we get clap crowds back and some changes, so. Number the number two match is uh, the, the the tag match we were just talking about Hameka and Micah versus Natsu Natsuko and and Saki. Um, the third match is the Stardom Battle Royal, so it'll have a bunch of old heads from Stardom, some legends from Sh- Joshi Legends, or whatever else. It'll have um, uh, it'll have some of the marvelous women. It'll have Shikusa Nagaya. And it'll have Kyoko and No Way. Inoue, one of the few women uh, <laughs> Observer Hall of Famers. We have Momo Nakanishi, who was uh, one of the old heads that was in the No People Gate Battle Royal that you saw. Um, okay. It'll have B, Starlight Kid, uh, Lasaya. The police going to be in it? God, fuck. No, he's not in it. No, they, they, didn't, <laughs> right. they, didn't, they didn't get the invite. Um, Ozaki right. Goon? No, no Ozaki Goon. Um, Trying to think who else in there you wouldn't. Hiroyo Masamoto. Yes, she I, is in I it. I thought I yes, saw her Hiro- listed. Yes, Hiroyo is in there. Yes, um, which made me happy because I, um, I wish she didn't. I wish she uh, was available to do more stardom, but apparently she isn't. Like I think she, I, I would love to see her versus Tommy or Micah or Hameka. Like any any of the Hoss Division shit, I would love to see her in here doing it. Um, so anyway, uh, that's the third, that's the the quote unquote. Oh, also Yuzuki Okawa is in there, the biggest draw in stardom history. Um, so that is the first match in theory on this card. This that's really the third match. Um then from there you end up getting um SWA match, Konami versus or Shuri versus Konami. That match will be great. Um then you end up getting um I think they're calling the matches in our title matches like basically like Mayu and Momo's matches, they're calling them like stardom anniversary matches or whatever. So mm. um after that you end up getting Momo versus Nanai. Um that match is gonna be that's gonna be fucking fantastic. Uh, then, then Yoshiko versus Momo. I think I got the order wrong on the SWA match. Oh, I'm not, I thought it was Yoshiko versus Mayu. It is Yoshiko versus Mayu. That is the third. That is uh, the the sixth match on the card. Okay, I yeah. thought it was, and then it's Momo versus Nanai. I think Momo versus Nanai goes on before. It doesn't matter. Okay. Whatever. I'm just laying out the card. I'll, we'll, you'll, the order will get. You'll see the order eventually. But um, I know the last the, the uh, semi main event is going to be the red belt match. Um, Utami versus uh, Tall Saya, and that's that's a, that's a big ask. Like they're going to be having to follow like four, like nonstop four star matches um, in, in theory or whatever else. Especially you look at like you know. My like, especially following my Yoshiko, like that could be a four and a half star match easily. So, um, we'll, we'll we'll see. Like I, they're not going to have a bad match. I'm not worried about that. Like I think they're going to have like a three and a three quarter star match, but it's just you know, it's a, it's a tough ass. Um, and then the main event, Julia versus Tam, hair versus hair for the white belt. Um. Julia also, uh, I just remember while she talked about, when she was talking about like taking the Starlight Kids mask and she's also going to take Tam's hair. She said like she wants to, she plans on making this like one of the greatest matches in the history of Joshi Pro Wrestling. That's what she said. So, um, Tam about to be bald in this whole. I don't think so, but whatever. Either way, um, the fact that she's main eventing is like, wow, that's crazy. Like, I, you know, if you just thought of it about it just off the top of your head, you'd be like, okay, whatever Mayu, Mayu does. And then, like, they take the butt off her and then, like, nope, not her. Um, Like, this, it, this has a lot of, I'm not saying it's as bad, but, like, if if Tam and Julia wanted two years down the line, they could tell like Utami and Sai if they want to take it to a vote. <laughs> Damn, because <laughs> cause like like they you know um, a lot of people believe that like Kairu is going to be the challenger for the red belt against Utami naturally, and then you know uh-huh. WWE said no, so they're like oh, and they looked around like oh you <laughs> you we'll put you in this, yeah. in this situation, but. And they would have made a minute with that, but once you get to a situation where it's like, all right, 
the hottest shit we've had for like the last year or this with this per- that lose per- the weak challenger is like well that's what you got to do um but yeah either way i mean I, the, the cards can be loaded card or card card is loaded like just a bunch of like can't miss matches all on, all on the card um yeah like I, if you guys have not been watching starting this is a perfect show to like jump in on yeah like it's gonna be lots of great stuff like uh like i can't stress that enough like just having followed it like not as hard as james has through like you know the last year or so but like i've seen like all these people like go up and down the card and uh, i'm intrigued obviously like there's a battle royal on there so that's very easy to you know sink your teeth into um they've got returning people in the promotion which are invaders in there they've got title matches and they've got uh, you know, just just regular people that are raw on the card. So uh, definitely, like, pay attention to this show. <laughs> yeah, like I saw, um, I watched their press conference and like pulled up off Stardom, like the trans, like the Google translated version of some of the stuff, and like, um, I'm, I'm this is my this might be my most highly anticipated show of the year in wrestling. I don't know what could come along that made me like care. That would be like I can't wait for this shit in the same way. Like WrestleMania, fuck out of here. Like no, <laughs> no, absolutely the fuck not. So, but but yeah, like um, yeah, like if if you know if you've heard me rap talk about this stuff for uh, any amount of time and was curious about this stuff, like as you say, like this is a perfect point to jump off on and watch it. Like I'm going to try and watch it live. I've never watched a Japanese uh, show live before. I may watch this live. Mm-hmm. Um, I am coming up with a way to watch it. <laughs> I'm figuring it out, but um, either yeah. way, you, you, mean, you mean you about to be located in Okinawa, Japan, for the day, or quite, quite possibly, quite possibly, you know, Tokyo, um, Hitler, yeah. which city? Yeah. Um, if I mean, if not, um, if that's not where your y'all steez are, like you know, um, it they're going to uh, reimagine is going to be uploaded eventually, like in the next, uh, like a, a day or two after, like, and a lot of people are. You know, Western fans put emphasis on like, if you uh, if y'all are gonna do, you know, if y'all are gonna, you know, get this shit out, and your plan is to make as much money as possible in the Western front, like you need to get this shit out, you know, and have a, a function for live pay per view. Like, people will pay pay per view for this here, not just in Japan. Mm-hmm. Like, it's already gonna be a pay per view in Japan, but but Western wise or whatever else, like, like you have the card for this. Like, this is your biggest show of all time. Like, you have there was the card. One th- there was once an artist uh, named Youngfella. He once said, "I pay for it." Like, and that's <laughs> oh my like God. that's kind of like the similar thinking here. That is, uh, well, you too, Tampa. That is, yeah. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, if y'all don't know, I'm talking about just type it in on YouTube. You'll oh see. Oh my God. Wow. I put out a late call for some questions. Uh, probably like at six thirty. We got a couple responses. Okay. So, um. Muzza, he has two questions. He says, "Is every world champion better than the Miz?" Ooh, every world champion. Yeah, he gave me a I, list. How low are so, we going on this? So we've got Kenny Omega, right. Kota Ibushi, yep. Roman Reigns, Yep, Rich, Rich Swan, Yep, Keiji Muto, Suwama, Roosh, Nick Aldis, Jacob Fatu. That's what he gave me. Utami. And Tommy, yeah, bell to bell. Look, abs- look Kenny Omega again, uh, Triple A World Champion. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. I mean, yeah, bell to bell. Absolutely. Um, all the people are better. Like, I mean, I, I, I didn't watch the the. Um, Apparently, I didn't, I didn't watch. I didn't, I didn't watch the Muda match, so I don't know how good he still is. Because remember, and yeah. remember, last time I saw him, he could barely move. But you know, he had some surgery I mean, done or whatever else. So like, he, I, I heard he moves. He's back to being like sudden uh, one, Muto again. One thing um, that I might find myself wanting to get into is Noah. I keep just hearing like great things about it. Like the, I hear the work rate is like, you know, yeah. What what we feel like New Japan is you know has has been hit or miss on lately. Like Noah's been cleaned all that up from what I'm hearing. Well, you got to well, look at um 
Voice of Wrestling. A lot of veterans. Yo, you look at Voices of Wrestling where they ended up finishing. I think, I think after you know, after New Japan, AEW stardom in WWE, I think they finished right after that, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so I mean, they, that means they obviously have the matches. Um. So he also said, with Daft Punk splitting up, who will be the Michael Zinginetti of the duo? <laughs> oh my god, are they are they going to make music separately? I have no idea. No idea. Yeah, um, I, I don't know. Um, I like Daft Punk. Um, I like obviously I like Random Access Memories. Um, I like the actual Daft Punk album. I, I mean, I haven't listened to them much, but like the stuff I have listened to, I have liked. Um, but I'm not a hardcore fan like a lot of people are. People are like they, you know, people treat them like they are like foundational. Mem- like, well, they are, but like, like it almost like they're the you know Jay Z type level, you know, person for EDM. And they, they are to the extent, but it's like, people talk about them like they're gods and, you know, I've, I've never gotten EDM that hard to where I'm like, I, I feel the next sort of way that they do, but I, yeah. I, I, I respect how, I respect how they feel about it. Uh, JML says, what's up with Bobby Lashley being booked so strong? I've noticed that ever since he lost clean to Finn at WrestleMania, he's been Teflon. Uh, well, they did book Bobby Lashley versus The Miz for next week for the title on Raw. Oh, my God. Um, I'll say this. Bobby Lashley fits a very particular archetype that Vince McMahon has historically liked. A big, muscly black guy that's tall. This goes all the way back to Ahmed Johnson, Tony Atlas, um, Lashley. I would say Big E, but Big E's short. Right. Uh, that's why he's never quite got that love like that from him. But um, I think, I think he just likes Bobby. You know, he he likes the fact that he's a Marine. Um, they like <laughs> there may be a political connection there. Yeah. <laughs> um, These people pull up the Trump coats on him uh, today. Yes, they did. They did. Yep. They did. yep. yep sure. Um, I uh, and and Lashley. I, I like Bobby Lashley as a wrestler too. So, um, I, 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 I like the fact that he always tries hard. I never feel like I, like, I've never felt like he's ever loafed while I've watched him. That I just think the thing is like, he's ultimately, he's at his best from what I've seen wrestling dudes that are big. And in this era, he has to wrestle a lot of smaller dudes. So he has to play monster in a way that's like, as opposed to like, it's a hoss battle. It's, it's, you know, big man, small man. And, you know, obviously you feel like that's a natural, easy storytelling device, but not, that doesn't mean the SR area is going to be really good at it. And like mm-hmm. the stuff that he's been good at that I've seen in WWE is like him versus Braun Strowman, the last man standing match, him versus McIntyre. Like you, he, he's good against guys that are his size. Um, yeah. what I've seen or better with Strange. guys his size, but I, <laughs> but I, you know, it's a thing where like he doesn't. It, the mic skills are never ever shown, or rarely ever shown. They they like I, hide I him in that perspective. I know him. Right, they hide him in that perspective. They had him do some goofy shit. Like everybody has to do some goofy shit. And like match wise, he's not like some work rate god. So it's like I I respect his work or whatever else, but like I I'm not, and I appreciate some of it, but like I don't love the whole package or whatever else. Yeah, I I don't know if there's a way for. I do like the fact that they pushed the shit out of him and protected the shit out of him, though. Yeah, like, that, they need that's something they absolutely need in WWE. Is like, I, like what they did with McIntyre and what they did with Lashley on TV. Could, for all the shit we give them, rightfully so, they got those two things right: protect motherfuckers and then eventually let them fight on the biggest show of the year or something yeah, like, approaching that. If it, if it ends up Lashley versus McIntyre, like I'll be into it. Like that's yeah, same here, especially because they gave us that little taste. Um, after WrestleMania last year, and they had a they had their way to get out of it. And, they, and remember, we were clamoring for them to do it. Like, when are you gonna get back? Or at least me, I was like, when are you gonna get back to this? That shit was raw. When are you gonna get back to this? And like now, it's like, okay, okay, I'm with it. If they if that's what they do, I'm with it. Like the Sheamus thing, I I you know I don't I you know Sheamus and McIntyre. I like what they did in the cell, but like I I don't think I like that more than that match that Lashley and um. McIntyre had uh, in 2020. Yeah. Um, and the last question comes from MJ Does PR. He says, please discuss a commentary fart during Kong versus Rio. Has that ever happened to you when you've recorded? I did not notice any fart because uh, I was watching on my phone. Um, 
so I, I must have missed this. I didn't have headphones in. Yeah, I thought it was Taz doing a comical verbal fart. I, don't, I didn't think he actually ripped ass for real. Maybe he yeah. did, but like, I, because because it, it dropped in like a perfect time for like, like it was almost like, you know, like, uh, like oh that shit suck, and it made a noise like that. That's what it seemed mm-hmm. like. Gotcha. But yeah, maybe man. maybe oh. I mis- maybe I mistook that. But either way, it's like. I, I never thought I'd be asked about comment, oh, commentary farts during wrestling. Yeah. I never thought I'd get to ask that question. Wow. Yeah, I, I'm sure I've let it out before on air, but y'all will never hear it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, oh, yeah, by the way, um, on commentary for the um, the stardom sh- for the Budokan Hall show, uh, Kira Hokuto is doing commentary on, uh, for the pay-per-view, too. So, like, they, nice. Like, they didn't... They, um, like open only, up your checkbook. Like, like the only motherfucker missing is like Manami Toyota. <laughs> like so, as far as that, some involved with this. That's about and it. Kong. I, I didn't see. I was oh, Kong Kong's not gonna be in the Kong and Rossi got Rossi. beef yeah. over the over uh, beef. when when they both left all Japan women to start RCN and then like there was up you know like they lost or uh, Aja Kong lost control and Rossi still had control and shortly after that Rossi left. So it was like they've had like they've had bad blood for years. Like Rossi and like she was in Nagawa had bad blood for a while, but like you see her in Marvelous now and Takumi and Ren and May, but like that you know, that's kinda of moved over. Like the 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 old country beef that will that seemingly will never be settled is Aja Kong and, and Rossi. Yeah. Like hell, even even the Nyan Yoshiko came back. <laughs> Man. They gonna have to figure it out. You know, we we gonna have to get uh, calm back in this bitch. You know, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, is there anything else? Man, um, trying to think. Um, real funny thing I always see on Twitter after every WWE pay per view, Kenny Omega seems to come up. What WWE happens, fans, so? um. I think they started sending out the WWE stand started sending out the Miz greater than Kenny Omega um uh things like so I just I'm just going to say this for y'all stop letting Kenny Omega hurt y'all I promise he didn't come to WWE it's okay man I, I know he turned y'all down 3 times I know I'd want him too on the roster but you just have to live with it. So that that's all. Yeah. All right. Um <laughs> That's weird. I, 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 After every WWE pay per view, oh, either this man's mentions are getting assaulted or people trying to go viral for clout. Speaking, of, about speaking of weird WWE thing, the stuff that me and you got into with two different people on Twitter was like Oh, and they, they're running with it too. Like they, WWE official accounts were putting this shit out too. <sighs> Okay, so for those that don't really remember, um, back with right after WrestleMania when Lashley, they were setting up the Lashley and McIntyre stuff after WrestleMania 36, um, where you know you had um, McIntyre laying out MVP left and right when MVP was trying to like, at, I guess he was trying to become his manager. And McIntyre like, no thanks, hold this headbutt. So McIntyre, so MVP said to McIntyre, he's like. I knew when you, once you got that match on the Rumble that I knew you are going to be Brock Lesnar. I knew what you had with the hook. And I knew that once, like, you couldn't or um, you want no parts or nothing to do with me, I said that I was going to make sure that I was going to be responsible for you losing that belt. So then you fl- flash forward to last night, and you look at the the cahoots that Miz and Lashley were in, and people play back that video and were like, "Look at the long form storytelling that they told like ten months ago to get to this point, and they actually pulled it off." The problem is, Randy Orton won the fucking belt at Hell in a Cell, and Lashley and MVP and the rest of her friends have a goddamn motherfucking thing to do with it. This cap, yep. This is- this is not absolute cow. This is not some uh, and and McIntyre won it back. Like this is not some uh, like maybe that maybe originally that was the plan was to do this, but once you pull the trigger on the Orton title change, you fucked it and you shouldn't have done that. That's on yep. y'all. 
and uh, not, not on y'all. That's and that on, happened. That's on them. It happened. We got the picture. And y'all don't have to lie about it. Look, in look, Randy Orton held the WWE title in 4K. So, <laughs> yes. like, in y'all don't have to, do to lie about this. I so, promise. You do not have to do this for clout. People, so people have are pretending this shit didn't happen and have turned to, like completely just like denying reality to say that this thing is is something larger than it actually is. When reality is like, look, man, you don't need that. All you have to do is point to like, look, they did have beefy screwed them. That's cool. Or whatever else I did. Like this is the next chapter. But to say this is some overarching thing is like in the way that they're doing it and portraying it is a lie. And there's no need for that. Like WWE does do long form storytelling at times. I, they, they, get, they don't get enough, enough as much credit as they given the amount of hell they get. They, they probably should, but it is what it is. And that's unfortunate, but this one ain't it. I don't know why y'all trying to make this one one when it's not. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, like you don't have to lie. I promise yeah, you. Like, yeah. like there's never a reason to lie. Weird. It's weird. Like you, like you could like just work hard and start like connecting stuff. Like you can connect um, Roman Reigns and Edge having a stare down in the 2020 Royal Rumble. If you want to say something like that, oh, I knew these guys would one day, you know, get to it, and you know, maybe the case, maybe not. But like, it's a whole hell of a lot that, better than, yeah. Hey, there's visual proof that, and like y'all know damn well, like that he lost the championship, right? right. In the Hell in a Cell, stop. <laughs> and it's like, what? What does this gain you? Not that it's like y'all are trying to do some. I think y'all are trying to be like, look, you know, either I peep this or. Look at how I hit. Look at WWE and all that banners. Like, bro, like, I'm not a person necessarily. I, I I like to think that I'm try to be fair to WWE, even though they're never fair, they're really fair to me. But it's like, nah, man, this ain't it. Like, there've been cases where they have you know tied stuff down together narratively, long form story. Like the redemption of Roman, of Seth Rollins, the babyface character in 2017, is long form storytelling. This one ain't it. It's not. That's and it's fine. It's not like it's not like they did something. Well, it's not like aside from making the Miz the champion, like as far as Bobby Lashley insertion into doing a feud with him in the, in the or again, like that's not that's not, nobody should be talking down on that. Like they protected the two dudes for a year and they're going to clash. Congrats! But as far as saying like this was MVP's this was, this was the this was MVP's Machiavellian scheme for the past year it was like okay. Miz has been the won the money in the bank on the same night at, that Orton won the belt. Why didn't you push a button in? Why didn't, like you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, it's not it, man. That's that, that's not y'all. Y'all are making shit connect that don't actually connect. Like some people's beers, yeah. not yeah. your beers, but like some of y'all. Some of y'all got wheat beers. But yeah. anyway, um, I think like, what right. beard? I'm fresh face right now. Right. Where's my stash? That exactly. Like, yeah, that man looks like a young Latino. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's it of the show. Be sure to raise over. Be sure to raise over. Fuck that. End in, in, in the show. Fuck that. Right, they, they, they know it. Later. What you doing? Trying on glasses with Zenny's 3D Virtual Try-On. Wait, are those the actual prices? I say get all of them. Seriously, why not, right? Oh, now I want new glasses. Zenny.com. Quality prescription glasses starting at $6.95.